I hope you had a very good lunch. Yes, it was a very nice local dish. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it indeed. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. So at least you have some energy for yes. the last session. Much obliged. During the previous session, you gave us some more examples of widespread executive interference into the judicial process. During your postings at the Banjul Magistrates Court as well as Mansa Konko and Farafenye. Follow what I yes, I'm going to Banjul Magistrates Court and Farafenye Magistrates Court. And Mansa Konko Magistrates Court. You also described how membership of the APRC could gain you massive favor with the executive. Extending to immunity from civil and criminal prosecution, it seems. And even absolve you from the legal responsibility of paying lawful debts. While, on the other hand, if you were a perceived opposition of the Jami administration, that meant unlawful prosecution. Persecution, harassment, intimidation. As well as victimization. You explained that due to your stance and your position as a magistrate to work according to the dictates of your conscience. The law and justice. You were actually I marked by the executive. And you were just about to give us an example of how this came to play. When you had a clash with the military in Farafenya, I believe it was at a military checkpoint. Kindly tell us how that unfolded. It's okay. Thank you so much. I remember one day I was in Farafenye. Farafenye. Um, the same Abasanya I spoke about earlier on. His elder brother was my personal friend. He had a mission, he came to Farafenye, but he was exhausted, he was tired. I had only soto anata farafenye bari wo tembo na ko yatara abatata he wanted me to drop him at the bambatenda terminal alafta prunga samba kata jindi bambatenda feri feri lodulato he pleaded with me to give him a lift just to drop him at the uh, riverside endani pru nga kata nga dema nga samba motola kata jindi bada la je feri wo kalo dami so I was obliged. <coughs> we moved. When, when we reached the army camp, the road was clear. There was no vehicle uh, in the checkpoint. So I drove straight in and I found um, a military officer standing on the highway. He said, I needed his permission for him to give me signal to enter the checkpoint. He asked me to go back on the rear. I said I wasn't going to do it. Because I was 
anu fo nyanta lola dami njani mbe duna ite lao ma wadi maafangola. Bari mfana mkonte okela. He insisted vehemently. He brought down his rifle. I told him, look, this does not scare me. I'm not moving. Abalanta, hanu fo ayala kido jindi. Kao muta, nka nyimbukante silandi. Ndu mfana nte muru la koma. So... We had an altercation, verbal altercation there. But when he realized I wasn't going to move, and after a lot of irresponsible talk, I put on the gear of my vehicle and I left him behind. So I went, I dropped Abba and I came back. Um, but in the ensuing altercation, he asked who I was. I told him, I am the traveling magistrate, but I said, that's not important here. And he started shouting at the peak of his voice, are you king, are you this, are you that? So like I said, I proceeded to Bambatenda, I dropped a band and I came back. And I at this point, were you also in your official vehicle? He yes, that was the official uh, vehicle for the magistrate. And I must also say this. All along the route, um, South Bank and the North Bank route, Everybody identified that vehicle because it was in service for over a period of five years or more. Mbe wa moto le kono yemendi na dukura moto mengine tatarlambulu mbe wa le kono adumbe ni mfula wa moto ba kumfulo be karafulo be wa moto lonne ya sute katu yatara moto ni uche wa mengine dukua lantel buluja sengi lulo sile. In fact, when he was misbehaving, one of his colleagues came from the main gate, approached him. Try to whisper to him that you are talking to the magistrate. Because of course, But he was just an indisciplined character. So in the evening, um, when his uh, commander, the camp commander in Farafenye, who was at the time Yankuba uh, Drame, the current CDS. He came to Nawek uh, Farafenye station to meet his cousin brother. Omar, who was my friend, I used to stay with Omar in Farafenye. And I told the officer of Farafenye, "Purukana asana o badin doji je ikafume ya Omar adu o Omar weyata na umunte terle tina katano nyoka ngwati jama." Omar is the full broad elder brother of Abba. Abba, wamu Omar koto maleti yelo la karola ngamira identa ba nimfala. So I complained to Yakuba how, in fact, uh, this officer misbehaved. He was sorry about it. He apologized personally. So we spoke over it, and that was the end. So when I went back to Kombo, I narrated the incident to my dad. He was offended. He said, I should write a petition. And then I wrote a letter, a formal letter of complaint to the commandant of the camp in Farafenye. And I copied the Secretary General, copied the Army Commander Den Bab Karjata, copied the Master of the High Court. Few days later, 
I was in Mansukonko, the post office messenger came and delivered a letter in my hand. Till Ganta or Becola, Mansukonko, but do Kulam and the post office, a letter or Pose Daming, and I die a letter or not in Yadum Blocono. This was a reply to my letter that I addressed to the Army Commander in Farafini, but this time around it was the Army Commander who was writing to me, Bab Karjata, with a very rude and sulky letter, I'm sorry to say, very rude and sulky letter. Uh, indicating in the said letter that they've not been able to control me, but this time around they'd get me. And that any of Oko, it will mantem malankuno, barin yin silo, ibe bulo la lankane. Okay, when I received the letter, I read it three times. Bring a letter on yin soto, nga karansi nya saba. I was so annoyed about it. A koyen kamfa bake. Then I received a call. It will do more for another commander or soto on the land phone. Telephone or the mayor on column. Office going to telephone or the land phone. Mr. Ture, before we go to the call, from the contents of the letter and how you felt about it, did you feel threatened in any way? No, Mr. I was not Ture. threatened. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was willing to engage Babkar. Uh, but was it a threat? It was Fire a threat, but I was willing to engage him. I was. I wanted to send him a stinker. So. I then receive a call. Again, another big coincidence. It was his assistant who was self subsidizing Sar. Yo, and dung anatake kuti menketa bengoti. And do atake at a no lang koleti, ika for me no tumo self subsidizing Sar. Self subsidizing had been trying to reach me on the phone for over a week. Self subsidizing ba kata kanu mpuru kante soto telephone auto menta tanfa siata lokumuti on a private matter. I've never met him in life. So he would call all the stations where I used to travel because we sit in Mansukonko, Farafenye, Kerawan, and SL. And then I would, when I come down to the combos, so he would um, keep calling all around the stations where I work and my uh, ad uh, home address in Serekunda. I commanded a kid in Kirajamale to Montella Codo Benjamin, Nkatama Lekata Kito Lukedulalto, Mansa Conco, Farafene, Kerewan, Ntaka Kito Kedamu Betra, I will be a commandi, Kata Hanfon, a suo from Okono, a la commandro Tatabarunion and Ding, a man sort of no forum. So when I received this call, um, he introduced himself, we greeted, and then we spoke about the issue he wanted to discuss with me. So bring out a commander or so to Nanyo Kondong and your Hadamaya, Hanfong and Bandi between Tumole and Nata Kacha, Tebante Commander Kan Kumena between Nobe Kacha or Tumole. Then I said to him, But look, I said, I just received a letter from your army headquarters, and it's your commander, Babkar Jata, who's writing to me. The letter is rude and sulky. What to Mole Nata Fai bring a dear Mobanka, but hm? My letter all the Sotom Bulujan, the Membota, a last soldier go a Kundong Koya. But later on, you come of fooling, come of romant and balle later on. You know, I said to him, I didn't write to Babkar, I only copied him. Nka and Teman Babkar Fang Safi, Ntanga Men Safi, Naki May, Na Ayele Maledrom Purka, Kiat Fanae Prof and Anzibo Akalama. Then he said, Oh, is it you? I said, Yes. Oh, you are the magistrate who was the subject of that letter. I said, Yes. He said, Please, I beg you for God's sake, don't reply to that letter. Akonye yo muna itelo mitelo magistrate o tinka ha. Akonye bitu o letter o munta a munta ya uli itele kamanka ha. Akonye nge dani alaye kana o letter o jabi. He then quickly added, he said, I, I beg you, do it for my own sake, not for your own sake anymore. Please don't write to the, uh, reply to that letter. Akonye se takote ka akonye mbe dani la alaye. Akonye la kuo kama, kane ete fango la kuo jube, bari nite la kuo jube kana o letter o jabi. He said, there is a big conspiracy behind that letter. If you would reply to that letter, you may even lose your very life. Said this matter was discussed in State House. 
And orders have been given by the president. He said when Babaka came from State House, he called my assistant, that was the third in command, a Mr. Baji. I cannot remember his first name now, but he said Mr. Baji. He said Babaka called my assistant, who was third in command in the army. State House. Babuka ye mo kumandi me yalon sojaro la nyaton kaya silo wole mo sabanja ngti me mo sojaro lu be kunton koti ka du ni butate babuka ya atelo mo floti fulanja mo Mr Sarleti sabanja ko Mr Bajilo mo ta kanyi na to tolale andum eh eh Mr Jata yo fon kumandi le kadia moy so when babuka was talking to Baji in his office he said you know in the army headquarters if you know the building he said the uh, upstairs apartment, it, 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 it doesn't have a ceiling. So when you are talking in one office and you are in another office, you can hear directly all what is being said. Ako Babu Karabediya muka wo Mr. Baji ya tumomeng, niye sojar korda nyin Kenya alonje, eh, silinte bunyinna. Nibe diya muka wo office dokono, membe siring office dokono, wokela kumaka wo lube moile, wole asabu babu karbe diamu kan nyin ala assistant yetu momenna mo ala ala assistant no lanko yetu momenna ate yo kuma kangulu moy wotu mole he said when i had the conversation i wasn't happy because i knew what they were up to was nasty but i couldn't intervene i just kept quiet ako biringa la moy la kumol la hanfo ngambandi akita nyi ni kuya bati amandi anya feren katu ngalon ko ibe fero le siti kam memu fere jaw pati but why are you mandabula je kuma mam fonye wala nam fanangande bara mandia nya fereng he said the issue is beyond babkar himself please i'm begging you don't reply to that letter akonye ngotu mole konyi atambita babkar fango kumolale woto mbedani la kana oleto rojabi but i wasn't bothered about that but wa mante de ngunga mansila i when we did our round i came home biringa na murumurungo ke i went to the high court nsaita na ndata high court had cause to meet the master Usman Jamme. I attended the ning court la master inyoje Usman Jamme. Um, I said, uh, Master, did you read uh, Babkar's letter? He said, Yes. In fact, that's a matter I want to discuss with you. Ngai Master, muna ye letter on sotole me muda Babkar ya bang akonya ha yo wumukuleti nlafta fango nite kwa mendiamu. He said, As a matter of fact, just two days ago, I met Babkar at the petrol station. Akonya kwa fango Kenya tilifula komanto. He said it was just a coincidence. We both entered the station. We wanted to fill our vehicles. Ako aketa yinye tidro mbenta jele mbe sulata esanso la bitu mbe tata nje na je tata tata kanya nyoma mbenta je killing. He said as soon as he saw me, he alighted his vehicle. He came down to my vehicle, telling me this your magistrate is being a problem for us now, but we will get him. Ako ndu mune bota babu karida kono. Biringa te lota dron ayenteje ajitala moto kono na atante la moto to akafanya nko alanyi magistrate kari mole me ya longo akira mo kule mo tibari mbulo bela la kane. So Usman said, please don't reply to the letter because if you do, it's dangerous. Usman konya ndukare kane la letter rojabi niyake asikeno ku kule mo ti. So he felt threatened that it was time that I should be transferred from Masakongo. Ate kwenye ya de unne hanufo. Because he knew that uh, <coughs> I will definitely have problems with the soldiers uh, in Farafenye on the ground. That why he long ago, soldier rolled men by Farafenye. Need a car la nyoma. For ni eku soto me ya long ka asike waliyoti ni olutema. So when I came home, I discussed the matter with my dad. He told me when you narrated your episode, I knew somebody was behind it all. It was not. Just a mere coincidence. Ak birin sa ita su ngakonya ng Kenya be kachampa mae. Akonya ngalonde. Amangke kukenzi mo tide. Amangke kuti fanang kafuko kule mening akulu benda. Ngalon ko mole be akonya ngkoma. So that was the issue. I I didn't want to pursue the issue any further because it coincided with my transfer, and that was the end of the Masakongo episode. Wale mkonya ndi. Yo mana bula kuono makoteke katu yente saundi wale nyama yembondi mansa kongo bitu mkuonyi mfana nata dede la wale nyama. And Mr. Ture, you've already alluded to the fact that um, you accept that you are a strong-headed individual. <laughs> Mr. Ture, you should go to the world and you can go to the world. Or perhaps someone would say stubborn. No, I'm not strong-headed, neither am I stubborn. I, I just feel 
I should not be intimidated in any given situation. Amanke kunjati, andunga manke kanja fananti. Barintena njini mutako, mumanya nante silandila kukense mwakango nyaduru. But in fact, your, recans, your, your recalcitrance and your defiance to the dispensation at the time attracted the attention of the big man himself, as the otherwise known as Oga. Yes, he made a statement about me a couple of times. I remember the Abasanyang incident uh, that I took to the court. The elders of uh, Buyam and Kankuntu went to meet him. After the elections. Buyam ning kankuntu alifalu ikafutanyo maleta ata kambirin karte fayo botala. And uh, I saw that program over the television. Nga program oje television oleto. Part of this discussion was to reconcile with the Buyam community for the unlawful arrest and um, incarceration of Abba. Eh, program ola falna do bije wole mnyintiko eh, isa kata on that occasion, he made a statement. He said what annoyed him most was the fact that when Abba was arrested and detained, he did not opt for any other lawyer but... Uh, one who does not only hate his government but does not like him in person as a human being. Ako me yate di men kuo kono, bring wo kuo keta, ye loya men bula akuo nyin noma, wala memba kito nyin tamandikang, ata atake mole ti me yalonko. Amari, amanda nyin nako, amala finna man sakundala. Bari mole mu nyinti, wo me yalonko, ayente fango kumole kong. So Jame himself perceived you as a personal threat, as an enemy. He said I mean, it. But I wasn't bothered about it, quite frankly. I remember when we had the Pasala Jain case. I traveled to the provinces with my mother-in-law, my wife's mother. Um, the British High Commission was concerned about my personal safety because they made inquiries and all the answers were uh, leading to the conclusion that they didn't, uh, all the people they contacted to inform them that they didn't know my whereabouts. So they were concerned about my personal safety. Between what the British High Commission Sorry. Sorry, it was the tragedy affair of the European Union. Alex one Alexandro Mariani, who was asking about my whereabouts. Okay, Sorry among, about that. among the British or like Commission, Alexandro Mariani, wole ba ko no masata kanu, wole European Union, wole Europe Banko la den na kafuba, member sitting wo kafu toya la Gambia jang, wole ba ko no makanu, wole ben na kuyini nka kanu. So when I came from the provinces, it was D.A. Jao who got me on the phone. Rimbota nam bolongo kono wosilo nse itanang, and that's the former minister of information. Then he said the European Union Shaye de Afia has been asking about you and wanted to see you. He said, um, I will call him to tell him that you are around, you are in town. Akonye ngotumu oleko, membe siri njang abe marali ng Europe tundo la kuolu la abe karafari kuolu be karafari ngatela mafolo nye ntembeng. Amari beni ninka kana nunga beni ninka yuo barabitu ni sila wairi ingeje mbe akumandi la lenga fa yangu ina atale katua kalafta dia mule yende mbwa fla ya ina atale bijang. So I went to meet him in the office. Then the office was in Banjul. Utumole mulita ntata ba indikata la office auto. When I met him, when I met him, he asked me. Brina inyo ya ininka 
if I had wanted to relocate to any of the countries in the West. Akonye fo, ibela fina le kata si banku kang, aketa banku o banku di menketa tuba abu banko la hoteli ji mafangoti. He expressed concern about my security. Ayala deunda ita ndinte fangu kungo la tanko kama. He said we don't have consular services here, but um, breast assault, wherever you want to go in the Western Hemisphere, I will talk to the embassies and they will give you a visa. Akonye nte lajang. Mambunda sotome ya alonko woleka udoku fosongolu tamandi tamala la kulu consular services. Akonye mbari, ijuso otenkundi, hakila otenkundi. Ite lafta tala dao dao banko lukang, ndebe diamula. He was stunned, he couldn't say anything. I said, just go and convey that message. Mbe siri na salo le kono otumo. Babiri nganyi nkuma kangulu faya, nkaya nko. Mfana mbete fana nkila o July 22nd mulu kang. Afoye ni pareta wairi kweka parele kana boi ntekang. Afoye ni pareta inata. Hanufoye mambo inkandiro bai. Watoe bebade o kelele kabo tala lulu alansara wato. Hanufo safo sali wato. Abebe kela bade oleti. Nsi ifana yu koindi itolo mantefana mbete kila. Yu kibaro fo itoli. So, so Mr. Ture, you are not only a warrior in the courtroom, but no, also no, at the battlefield. I, I mean, I know Mr. as a matter Ture. of history that um, war is all about propaganda. So that was my own propaganda to them. They are on Tariko, near Tariko, on Yajube. Kelolu be propaganda, Walem Kumaba for Cafe Rolu for Menuya long coitesi, Tukuno Menula, Sisuno Menula. A baby dending Walebala. That was the end of that episode. Wokuba and Awaleto. Let's go to your next destination, your next postings. Where was that? I came to Bundum. I came to Bundum, but Bundum was absolutely quiet. Because this was after all the elections. And there was no trouble around the country. And when, so it was only during the elections that trouble brewed. No, that's when they reach their height. And that would be as a result of political. Yes. But the life of magistrates in those days, it was you were uh, permanently confronted with one challenge or the other. But the magistrate all, ila baluo kono watembo akoleyatere. Katu wati o wati isalongo ite ni kukole ne beti lin na nyola ebe bola doko no ebe dunna doko no. So I left Bundung. I went for my bar. I came. I was posted in Basse. But you know, not about Bundung. Not about the Karangoto. The bank and the bar Karango ke funga bank. Birin say ite nang yensamba Basse. Okay. When it was when I was posted in Basse, the people in Basse, the July 22nd, got to know that I was the one who was supposed to go there. During the Samba Basse, July 22nd, la umulu menu beji inata longko utumole koye yara yentele nati je fanang yentele Samba nam Basse kiti bunda leji. When were you posted to Basse? What did you mean by you saw on the Basse? This must have been in 2000, 1999, 2000, because I spent 14 months in Basse. 1999, 2000, So Banta Kamara made the delegation. They came and met the chief justice and said they didn't want me in Basse. Banta Kamara, I molu kafunyoma, ye molu wulindi, kana chief justice kang kafaye nko e mansula ntela Basse, malafin naje. Who was Banta Kamara? Jumala Banta Kamara. Banta was the chairperson of uh, AFPRC in Basse, and um, he was a member of the July 22nd. But he was a highly influential person. Banta le mum July 22nd kafola siran TOTJ watundo kang adu mole fana mu me ya longo atobo taba ke aku alakuo sembo warta umafanga la mulo kono. I think at some point he even became vice president of APRC. And when I met what is certain to find, he placed the name along with him APRC, but he only in the president of Nolanka Makamoti, vice president. So they met the chief justice and told him, but the chief justice told them that look, we don't have any other magistrate we can post in Basse for now except Mr. Ture. Three of the chief justices. Afanaye jabi ni la kwa mkoongo. 
nyin tembe 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 magistrate do soto be men sambara basse mr touré cola at that time there were a lot of problems in basse andu wotembo ku kole ya ku kole jamal be basse pertaining to the image and integrity of the court itself men tilinta kiti bunda fango lanya ning a kenya la kolu be lari nje nyame and Osman insisted that it was me and me alone who could go and uh, stabilize the place. Usman Fanambalanda, a contelamu, nte da man ne fanamu mo di men sita noje ka kata kakulu tembendije keilaku. And why do you think the APRC party were resistant to you coming there? Manat nete fe APRC la party o mo libe balang ding balangko ita manyana tala baje. Because Banta had this uh, <coughs> very unfortunate uh, privilege of controlling every magistrate who was posted in Basse, but he knew he couldn't do same with me. Karu Banta otumo, ninkera koma sayo ti magistrate olmen be kata Basse, ikatara bulole kono, ateleka uwa kango tamani ulube kang, bari ate Banta na talong konte de, nde mu mole ti me ya longo ayo dolu mara nyame ngatente ate kuno lantema. I've never met him in life before, but from what he has been hearing from people and so on and so forth, in fact, I understand when they came, they asked him in the Chief Justice's office, uh, they, the CJ asked them, why didn't you want him to be posted in Basse? He said, we understand this man, nobody can manage him. Chief Justice nena mam bem folo bari bari la commandante chief justice ay ñi ni ka ko en ko sañ atelu mule mu wala balanda ti mu nanal malafi ñim magistrate la pray tra basse ya jabi men na wolam ñinti ko nga ñin ki baro moy le mo lem ñinti me ya lon ko mo buka malan kunno ndun ta malan kunno la wo dalilo le ya sabu malafa la ji so he was under the wrong notion that magistrates were supposed to be managed or controlled I remember Mutanga Bulwala Nintuko, Kitty Taylor, Nibiji, Nanta Katara, Marola Koto. Well, that was a well established tradition. It's most unfortunate that uh, if you go to Farafene, Sambujang had control. If you go to Basse, um, Banta had control. Um, so there were these uh, power barons all across the country. And every civil servant, for that matter, if you go, you must go pay homage to them. So he realized I wasn't going to be the one to be controlled. Uh, what tembo kube kerim bangko kang ni mfara fanya mafangolom sambujanjang le uh, ibetar la wole la maroko to ni mbaselom ibetar la banta 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 kamara la marole koto andungo tembo amanda itella bangko fana jamaa bije molo bije meneketa mo sembe malti moto bori molo inio sembo lube siring itele njono mota ko ko kundi na futa itella tundo la itella kamo le nyanda tamala andung Utumu basi banta na la mole ya longo nte dun iteole soto no la nte la itenti malang kuno la hani fui fangulu ya longo la na itara chief justice ya kwa malafu ndaji. So finally I went to basi. Bitu na tena tap basi wakamale kang. So we were there doing the work. Bije mbelu koke kang. Until when one day, following killing, my wife called me on the phone and told me that. That uh, UDP delegation came there on a campaign. UDP la kafomo lunata campaign ola je. And somebody was killed. And umo soto nta yemenfa je. And since been hearing that they will take the matter to court. And ruabe nyimwe kanko iba kuo kito sambala kiti bundale la. So to, she told me to be careful. Akonye bitu isi hakiloto. Told her I'll do what is right. Nka yemen tilinta mbe ole kela. No matter the consequence. Aketa kuo kundinti tonya mbeta mala walela. So, I went to Basse. Ndata Basse. And uh, 25 people, including the United Democratic Party, were arranged before me. Mumu ani lulu, ulukono UDP la mulu, inata wale londi nyati lingula. 24 members of the UDP and the United Democratic Party was also charged. Mumu ani nani ya wale kalami ke yutumi? And we had a UDP party of fango fango fanan charge. The party itself, the party as an institution, itself was, was charged with a criminal was, offense. For his mother, it was the 25th accused person, United Democratic Party. The moment I didn't know the killing killing to me, Imanda wrote, 
Pati yo fangu muu mewo, UDP pati yo fangu muu mewo, wole keta muwa ni lulu njangoti ye tumiro la menka. Can you give us the criminal analysis or the analysis of that um, on the criminal law? Isa fanya bang, isa fanya no wokul, isa teme no ya fanya kome nina ta kuja ubarala la kuoto, luala fanala. As to whether or not a company or an organization can be charged with a criminal offense. For Kasene and the four Doku Dinkra Bunda, Wala Patio, Isa Tumi Noleko, I find like a mere and Kuja Balem, Luala Fanara. Yes, in law you can charge a corporate personality. Ha, Luala Carola, is he Bunda Ba Molu, is he is he Tumi Nole? When I say corporate personality means a company or a registered entity, you can charge them with a criminal offense. Ninko company wale mdo kubunda ba wala meya longo aketa kafuleti mensa feta isi tu mino leo kufasongola. Would you in that process have to lift the veil of incorporation? For kang inyanta kalu fengo boni meya longo wale ye mura inyanta kuo boni le saje se marilu ni tu mino banki samba kiti bula bongo do wala katu miri jawa la kang kuyo kujo baleke. No, you can charge them directly without, in fact, lifting the veil of incorporation. The lifting of the veil of incorporation takes place under civil procedure. Well, I see to me no le lua la silo la satara ima ilawo muraram fano boikang. Wo muraram fano kau boikang wo kana wati la ling ayatra kote ayatra futa hanufu silang aketa langkela mo kote maya longko nyin silang kunyanta tamala jele. In that case, you would only be able to find the company. You would not be able to impose a custodial sentence. Yes, I'm trying to... Yes, you are perfectly right. But you see, when you charge a corporate personality, you can only do so in relation to... Um, uh, corporate matters, for yes. instance, where there is negligence on the part of um, a body corporate and it has resulted uh, to damage or where, for instance, fraud has been perpetrated by a corporate body. But uh, a matter pertaining to individual liability such as murder, I mean, that's not within the corporate responsibility of a company or a registered body. It, it, that was just a clear, the highest degree of manifestation of uh, vendetta against the UDP as a political entity. keta, Andu iduno meba la le kam kuluro to wolem ibe kono le jo la wala ye alaman yo baribitu itelie kuwa ulindi nyaming puruka patio fango kumo samani weme yita ndi wolem nyinti ko itelu lef ibe kamfaring patio nyin kamale ilafita julu jo kolengo la la patio kang wala na patio fango samani. Was the leader of the UDP party also charged? For party on your kundong koning, UDP la party on kundong ko. For ya for na two mila bang. Mr. Dabo was accused number one. Mr. Dabo le mo follow the two mila la tamenka. So it was one sergeant Trawale who mentioned the matter before the court. Because for me, yes, sergeant Trawale, wole nyingu lumemba kiti la wole akumu for kiti bunda nyila. He came and made a submission, very brief, that um, they have started uh, investigations and the investigations are not concluded. Anata, I diamu sutu nekije, koye la kisikisiro lu damu tale kwenye mkono, andu ilao kisikisiro lu mamba mfolo. So he also raised the issue that bail, uh, murder is not uh, bailable by the magistrate courts. I nyo mfana mfoje leko, puruka wo mo lu bail, magistrate kitibunda ate wo lu bail nola. At that point, Mr. Ture, did you have jurisdiction to actually entertain a murder case? Oh, Mr. Ture, for what on your corner? What on your walk it on your nineteen yard and what the ammo nineteen yard and for what to yes and both so don't know please a lamb when walk it on your tiny album for a big kitty bundam and the four symbols of the look away lamb walk it your lab. No, I could not hear the substance of the charge mother before me, but the criminal procedure code had been amended if and if I can remember. I believe it must be around section 285A. 
wherein power has been conferred on magistrates uh, when um, a charge is brought before you, i.e. a capital offense, which you cannot uh, prosecute or which you can hear and determine, and the matter is under investigation, uh, power has been conferred on you to remand the accused persons in custody pending the completion of the investigation. What do you want to say about the people who are in the world? What do you want to say about the people who are in the world? What do you want to say about the people who are in the world? But if you are in the world, 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 you are in the world. Was it preferred by the prosecution or the government at that time to actually make use of that provision to get especially politically motivated um, detainees remanded in mile two rather than perhaps to go straight to the high court where bail could be applied for and given. For Ikaga Minkamba coming, Kitin Dirlani, Wollem Police Oldi, for Akabo Mansala Blokono, President Ola Karola, Pre Isajoko, Molmi Alonkoi, Inim Mansa Duntanola, Political Fanal, Isaje Sekeno Motim, Iso Luan in Taya, Landikang, Isaje Sindino Blackling, for Wato Mialonko. The government's drive simply was to secure a remand order against the accused persons. That was their drive. Because at the relevant time, there was filed a bail application before the High Court by Mrs. Denton. I was then not even aware of that. So they were competing to get an order remanding the accused persons before any possible granting of bail by the High Court. Wo bel kaito la kamo be dunna hanu foja ni be ulundi la puru satra itele ni lu dundi riman itele bole nyosa bango la nungo tumo. Because it was also a settled practice of the government at that time that when people are charged with capital offence, they will rush them to a magistrate court, get an order of riman, and even after the high court would have granted bail, they will still insist, they will still refuse to release them. And they will be um, justifying the, um, uh, the detention on the basis of the order of remand made by the trial magistrate, when in fact the High Court has already granted bail. We had uh, incidents of that nature in the past. What more? Because the government has already made its remand. Katui katara mune nyosaba nkang, jani mbele kaito bedada la kabo kiti bunda ba la puru kafu koka nyimi molo bel, iteleka katale hano fu iteleo molo dundi riman. Ning kaito hani kaito na tabo kiti bunda ba la puru kanya nyimi molo bel, eka lo mune kang, ha wajatar le wotan bita le wotar ni tala waka wajatar le nyimi molo la kuo ye dundi riman foka pare andung ila hani ngani yoka kawaleti puru kwa molo muda kasola. To give the issue of bail some context here, because we, we discussed the issue of the decree number one suspending the constitution. This was after the transition had actually finished and the constitution was back in its rightful position. Yes, this was in 2000. Yeah, so therefore there was a right to bail. 2001, yes, I believe, 2001. There was a right to bail. And there was a right to bail. Even in murder cases, unlike what operates today. Yes, there was a right to bail in murder cases. Wadumu 2001, nyanto bijele, hani mofa kito isamari bail nole. So the whole idea was because the investigations are not concluded, and I cannot grant bail. It's a subordinate court. I don't have power to grant bail. They thought the only option available to me was to remand them, and I refuse. Wotembo, wairi kiti bunda la kuo amamfuta uto follow. Ite la hamu momenti nindro, yenine long, yenine muto kunte, sembedo tena katu nte be kiti bunda mena umu kiti bunda ndi muli, sembedo tije animfere, sembedo tije fanya ni molo sambari man, ite la bela firi ngole la, wola na yekolo tamani wanya tarinke, puru ni molo sitari man, jani kiti bunda ba be kuta mandi leji. 
did you have a discretion to do so despite the law that provided that you should remand them? Poyo sembo suto le proko ga atara fa lua be lor na miya foko enyanta ke sindi dula klin. Yes, I am convinced I have a discussion because if you look at the law across the Commonwealth, especially in Kenya, you can meet a judge in his house over the weekend and move your bail application. Ha, nga mere o tembo nsi o kenole, katu ni ajube Commonwealth Banko Lukang, sako banko membe ke Kenya, membe ko Kenya. Isita akiti ndirila kane ala bungo fango kono, hani watu me manke doku, watu tifango kafo loku mbandula teng, wikeno, ina ya kacha, andu isi kaito dundino me yalonko, mubel kaito leti. But looking at the statutory provision itself, did that give you room to exercise that discretion? But say, no, 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 that statutory provision was provided only for situations and the power to, was to be exercised only in good faith, not in bad faith. Uh, but the it was not a witch hunting it was not a provision intended for the state to victimize anybody uh, but it was meant to be exercised that power was meant to be exercised in good faith kulo me alonko amanke ko ya wulini ne kam kudo bari bitung otembo lem nyinti ko mo manjan na bula la mo no ma kala bon fenyo no ma pour ka nambara bari bitung hanni ba sarto fananta mandila nyanta ke la kusenu ngule kang anengani asenaya but again under the law when a matter comes before me as a magistrate, and I don't have jurisdiction over it, I have a power to transfer it to the court, have a jurisdiction. And that was the power that I exercised. And I referred the matter to the Chief Justice in Chambers to sit over the issue of bail. And I expressly ordered that the accused persons be escorted under the command of the officer commanding police, uh, Basse Division. And I expressly ordered that the accused persons be escorted under the command of the officer commanding police, Basse Division. And I also further ordered that the accused persons be escorted that they be taken to Banyul Police Station be detained there overnight. I further ordered him to um, bring them before the Chief Justice in Chambers the following morning. And I further ordered that on account or no account should they be detained in mile two prison or in any other location other than Banyul Police. Because I knew that they would not have been tortured in Banyul Police. The general public would have had access to them. At every time of the day or night. So, following day, I was sacked again. <laughs> Mr. Ture, indeed, you were able to be very creative with the law um, as a magistrate, it seems, and you were able to use the gaps and the lacuna in the interest of victims and to secure justice rather than applying the law strictly in a technical sense? Yes, because if you, you are right, if you look at the setting in Basse at that time. Council, you know, you know, Mr. Ture, what tempo, I believe I was If I had exercised the other option of remanding them, I would have been a charlatan in the society today. Amonta biitilo mbekela moto kuyari mbaleti jamakono. Because the setting in Basse, katuotumo kolbenu nyame Basse, the climate of fear and intimidation was too great. 
rotumo molla silanya anin kamolu detendi asembo wartan mbake base there was no opportunity how they could have gone to janjambure andun silado ti je mensa kendi han fo yetano janjambure without any one of them or all of them being tortured satara itelu kono hanim mo kilinti je ma menta jire ya wala ka fo itelu mo be si tanka tajire ya ma wota kelanu ferete je fo bulo e lar kilinkan wala ye be tajire ya so that warranted your second dismissal wala ya ti na te bay bay re fula nyaw la yes and this time did you escape did you go to canada this time did you have a chance to petition the president and come back to the judiciary ni wati do foy nata silo so do pour que se faire que kata president kan pour ka muruna judiciary ban kiti do la do no as a matter of fact just slati who was the chief justice at the time ah ni kol kata nyame wodo mo justice slati wolam chief justice o tembo prevail on me to write a petition ay ni la lo tan kan ko nga petition o safe wolam kam fana na kala amir kan lo safe an There was so much pressure on government also they were going to yield in my humble opinion and wodumo yaman sakunda fana detendide ye detendi bake hanufo atata findi koy fana lu si sonno le kolula pour nte la taram fambulo kamma but i was not interested in continuing on the bench bare amanna kenna la fonna koti pour nga continuer Yeah, kiti tamando la wo bunda la eh, bench nyindo i remember many of my friends and brothers called me to congratulate me and one of them uh, happened to be baba gale jalo whom i met this morning here and when he called me on the phone he told me congratulations for your redemption eh ngakilo baka ntero lu nkafunyolu eh mo jamalu yen kumandino wotu mo kan konton eh kan jay fanan kolu lanya kam andugol kono mo kilimbije me yalon koy ka fayna baba galle jallo ala ya ke biñin sumanda fango na benta jang andum biringa yen komandi nun ayen kontonne ayen jayi ko ñe pour e le kolu laña kamma so your dismissal in essence was a blessing in disguise it was kam to koy le bayo akete la kayrolti ah it was indeed because um the government would have been compelled because the magistrates also had an emergency meeting and they were going to take a position if i was not reinstated back and they couldn't have contained the situation but i i just decided that the time is up i have to be on my own eh akata no nyame ngotu mo be ngata ko kamale dia mo lukata ka do dum mo nyaton ko dol bije men yalon ko leftal num fango pour ye ben ya ko dia mo pour yen temurundi barbe dun tele nata jube ngwa man si o beto nde nga ko tu jele drongam fonyo wole wole munde la kairo to dadi lo le ya sabu nga ko tutu la je but the case of mr dabo brought three changes in the law but mr dabo la ko ay falin sabale nati lu ala karola and that answers one of your uh, areas of concern and legislations we... which have been passed to stifle the rights of the citizen wo ay la nyilin karo fanna do jabila wole nyinti ko eh wo fanna kilimbi jeme yalon ko ka molu da sorong menna wolem ka molu da suki eh lua la karola pour ñing kamala e telo si sa wo soto wolula ayo bunda ayo bunda falin um the criminal procedure code was amended 699 and do ku krumulu tamandi kiti bunda ñim falan falin ko ta jelle 699 um the right to bail was taken away in, in respect of uh, capital offenses inata bail ko bondi yow buruka ka foko ning amari ku jaw bal ke ku jaw kunton ko e ka fo me capital offense wala mo fa na ñon doluti bail rote ke no la yow bondi jey bail ko bondi wol ko no le by this time mr dabo and his team were already granted bail by the high court but wo be kala tumo me ngoya tra mr dabo na la ka fo molu high court ye bail di wol la tumo so we are still faced with that uh, problem if you are charged with murder or manslaughter now you don't have bail limbide wo kole ko ben kan janne hanne bi katabula bila ni e muta mo fala a ete bail no la de hanne bi wolbe lori so that particular section section 99 was designed to actually prevent mr dabo and co from getting bail from from get gam do ko yo loi bunda min londi wo nyama yo min fali wo nyama ya kale pour mr dabo ana mo nyori kana bail sotono that's quite true was it passed before 
the application for bail came up or the ruling or after? It came after bail was initially granted by Justice Monahan. Another word to me, we are Justice Monahan, your bail can be in the middle of the pare. We call a long in Kaunata. There was then a pending appeal before the Gambia Court of Appeal against the ruling of Justice Monahan. And do what more? Balango be dending, we bail Kunyala, Kitibunda Bato. Kabalang Justice Munahen la obil kuala. The state succeeded in that appeal. Between Mansanata, a silo sotun wo sain kandiroto. But uh, the justices of the Court of Appeal again tied the hands of the state not to uh, re arrest and detain the accused persons. The respondents in the appeal. That's Mr. Dabo and his group. Kitin de la Mimbeje wo fananata ka umenta mandi wole mnyantiko. I kana wo kudendi mo jindi na waira be dendi na follow. Purunyin Kamala, Mr. Dabo na kafunyolu, ikanana wulu sainka muta ni ebula ke bel ni ebula. Okay. The other aspect of the law that it affected was... Fanado me mfanama alua la karola, wole mu? On jury trial. Wole mu kitindiro me ya alonko mu jamale kasi ya kitu okuna? The... 1997 constitution provided for jury uh, trial. 1997 constitutional. Um, when you can jury trial, I remember when Mr. Dabo and his um, co-accused persons were arranged. They refused to take their plea because they said they needed to see the law that was going to be enacted um, on jury trial. Biri yeye lunati, Mr. Dabo na lamulu, ibalanta le katu mune keta, iko ilafta lona le, lua nying member akoo nying koma abelari nyadi le, meng keta jama kitindo la karolati, ikafume jury trial. That also delayed the commencement of the trial in the murder case itself. Wala fana nata ke kuti wala wabalango, wale kulo dukundi, wala ka mendi, puru kito nying meng keta wamofa kito nying jana bedati la aiwati ta. And what was the essence of that particular amendment? The constitution provided for uh, a right to, it, it gave a right to accused persons to opt for jury, jury trial. That was the constitutional provision. So, but then it further went on to state that Parliament should prepare the enabling legislation. But it continued to continue to that law had not been enacted uh, by the time the accused persons were arranged before the uh, High Court. But then that delayed the commencement of the trial. Um, I'm not very sure, but I have a feeling that um, there was an amendment that came. Amanko ima ba kete bari. Nani mto nani miran sondo mo koko falindo fana nata nali yao bari bitung funga katanga o kuo londi follow ka faham. But whatever the case, it's clear that jury trials do not actually operate in the Gambia as we speak. But the court cell ano nyanya nyanya dorong alonda la shani ya telefona ko kumi kwa kiti ndi raja ma ma bendi pru ya mo kiti ndi na kutundro kwa umu fanya timi alonko abuka kenyi mbango kanya. We used to have jury trial. But along the line, it was taken out. Neneka kitindro kile nungo nyama, bari bitu mbewele kana nungo ati nata soto ya mume obundi ya buruka. But it was brought in by the 1997. It was brought back by the 1997 constitution. But the 1997 constitution wole ya murundi na. But it was not in practical operation because, as we speak right now, 
it is not something that actually operates in the court system in the criminal but if that i cannot capture exactly but there was an amendment uh, but it was given as a right under the 97 constitution falimu ketale men tilinta okola bari bitum hakilo ma muta wati men kilimu bari 1997 constitution ya dabula ndi okonole nu and would, and would you say that that was also another amendment that was used by the political system to influence or exert greater control over the judicial process because they could control one man easier than they could control, you know, about 20-something or 30-something people, depending That's quite on true. the size of the judicial That's quite true. But there was also judicial. equally a potential danger. Unless the law was made or was enacted, you, you stand to your detriment if you opt for jury trial and then you have a group of July 22nd boys being paraded as jurors before a court. Ah, wo fana as a keno le bar kudo men fana beje ni man na manta be ngo soto wo mo jamalu menu bina ka fokete la kitoke ni im mantalu walita ite marie July 22nd la molu nata na beng men ya lonko iko wo le bete la kito kundula ha bitu ode wo beke la ku maneleti Mr. Ture, let's move on. Um, Mr. Ture, I'll continue. To the 2006 court martial cases, I believe you were representing some clients uh, in the particular court martial. In 2006, I was able to get a soldier to get a soldier. I was able to get a soldier to get a soldier to get a soldier to get a soldier. If we could just go through it briefly, um, highlighting the issues there of fundamental human rights, violations of human rights, for example, torture and the right to fair hearing. And do not have a soti and the combay said don't go for nala yet domandim for nya jaya soti and the coming yan told tinyata jaya had madunga lanyanto ya tinyanya dile woku kitty bumanyanto. Okay, following the 2006 abortive coup. In 2006, coup d'etat by Ringo Botala. Um, the civilians and the soldiers were all charged and they were uh, arranged before the High Court. Civilian olu, and in soldier olu, ye be to me, ye alone the High Court nyati limula. The trial in the High Court got stalled because many of the defense counsel withdrew their representation. Kito nye ntama tanyame in High Court anasita, katu mo jamabi je meni alonko ebe lori ntankwala karolela, wolye da bondi je muruta koma. Why would defense counsel have cause to withdraw their representation for clients that they had agreed to represent? I don't know if I'm loyal to you, but I don't know if I'm loyal to you, but I don't know if I'm loyal to you, but I don't know if I'm loyal to you, but I don't know if I'm loyal to you. I don't know if I'm loyal to you. You know, we had a perception that the judge who was assigned the file uh, had a sympathy for the state. Ndele ngani na miro soto no rumo kujojo wala kitendi la me ya longa belori mansa kunda e wo ni na banga ni yoto purka mansa kunda fasa. Which judge are you referring to? Omo kiti tela jumadi. This was the former DPP and then he later became Chief Justice Akomai Chief Akomai Ajim. Ngami ra utembo kafume Chief Akomai Ajim wole meti moti. Mwenye alonka amarita nye nkito lulanya la nga mera utumo ole nyanta lula akito nye nkundo. In all fairness to him, he hadn't manifested anything to warrant us reaching that conclusion. Tonya, 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 purka tonya tamandi. Aman kukede, mensi otaman siru itandi ntelula kwa alaftafasa rolela. But taking from the fact that he was the DPP for two consecutive terms. Bari ni ajube ya teketa DPP di hanu fo... It was like getting a prosecutor to be a judge in your case. Amunda kitendila ni ota ya keko wale be kito fana kuntu leti la kuni mkono. So because of that long career as DPP and his closeness with the executive, we had fears that the accused persons may not get justice. Nsilata karumu na nsilandi. Anem banko kundongo la kulu kata tanyo la baake andu wakola afanang anataka moti me meta o palaso to DPP palaso so wale nsilandi ngani muto ko ni molo ati yamfale. Mr. Ture, I mean you do say that you didn't have any cause to believe that he would be impartial in the case, but if you look at his track record as DPP, if he had exercised independence during his his role as DPP, I don't think 
defense counsel would have been so anxious about his current position. <coughs> coming here for Nyame, you go coming. I'm if a monk came more to me along Cabalala Abu Albo Monyo Doka, while I be Lala Mokan. But coming near Gibi, Alatari Koto, Cabri Wato Mialanko, I get a DP Peter Abemol Kit in the gang, near Gibi, Cabru Wato for B, four se Kuboni no la Kaitan de la Co, as a Fasaro Kenoleba. Yes, like I was saying, uh, if you look at the general setting in the country at the time. Kumba fokan nyame ni kolu la nya jube kenema banko kan o tembo do we were seemingly democratic court and uncourt yo bare bi do mo menka fo ani menka yitande wolam nyinti ko democracy le banko ka but in reality it was a dictatorship bar to nya to nya tajire mararo le be kerin no wotu mo and the dictatorship that came adun wo tajire mararo ana take nyama post elections sako karte fayo tambringo was worse than the dictatorship that we had during full military dispensation. Wole fangu jawiata tajire ya mararoti wakarte fayo kola katambi watu la watu me ya lonko abe otumbu wa hani karte fayo nyi mfangu manke folo. Um, because he had a um, long career as a DPP and he had interacted with the state for a very long time, he has defended the interests of the state. So we had a fear that it was all not safe uh, for him to be assigned the case. Kato Tembo, ame bata wa palaso tole wa DPP palaso. Amanda wala, ani mansa kunda meta nyobulu bake le sako mansa kunda kundongkolo. Wadali lo le silango du nintel kono ko woto, nyi mumu wale tume ya lonko, ate tilingo tamandi la nyi nsafar bundala, abe palaso ome ndoteng. Ako wotumo, brintilingo silango soto nsondo mo kono, so we raised concerns and we asked him to recuse himself, he refused. So we met as a defense team and decided that some members of the defense team should withdraw just to paralyze the hearing of the matter. Andol fanal na ta folo bitu menu belo ring muta mo le ngaji be puru mo dol fanal bije ye da bondi kito nyin to puru kito nyin silamfu isaje asilamfu nyama me ya lonka tina ate tamanola so the the state could not proceed with the matter because of lack of lawyers bitu man sakunda man kito nyin tamandino katu man lawyer soto and that was a requirement in capital offenses that yes you cannot no. proceed to hear charge against uh, an accused person who is charged with treason and unless he is legally represented wo tembo lu ay ñina foko e tembo kitindi no la meya lonko lu man sa loya man tra kering men si lo no ate mari ye man sa kunda te o mari kitindi no la o nyaama o tumo fay mo soto meya lonko lebelo la ye loya la carola so because of the withdrawal of the defense most of the defense team the case stalled in court Kato tumo menu nyanta lola umuta moli e wairi ulube muru ta koma e da bondi je kito mana tano kato itelefona litman sakunda te kito ni intaman dino la nimuta molo man loyal soto mbe lole e wale nata kito ni nasin difu aman tano so they were therefore forced to sever the case file into two they took the soldiers to the army barracks that is yundum and um, created a court pan um, a court martial. Ah, betul. Nah, tamu nak ke? Ia kuat fata fulat. Sojaro lu membe kuat kono yolu samba yundum. Purke kitin di sojar silola. Goto malu yolu la kuat landi kerala. Were you in both cases in the treason trial at the high court? I participated both in the treason trial and the both in the court martial and in the treason trial. Don kito ni mfana fulo benga be mal. Sojar kitin do la kerala nda bijele. Ibe kitin di la jamfa jau la tumo mena kabangko jamfa. Trisin, nda be utole fana mengeta mulo tisivili yangu luti yemenu kitendi akuakama. I represented yaya Dabo in the court martial. Ndele lota yaya Dabo yeye sojar kitendo yinto. And I represented Ali Ujob in the trisin in the high court. Alu ndele lota Ali Ujob yefana high court jamfa jau kitola kuto.
Were there any things that stood out uh, during the trial, especially in terms of the treatment of the accused persons? For Fembi Jeremia Longo, he suffered a work cattle and a manana cake, Sakat Manina to Fana, the Mia Longo, Wolem Multi, the Mill Tumi, for a cookie, the Mia Longo, manana cake. During the pre trial detention. Or what were at a fang, he may some buffalo kitty bundad. Ibe Mutokon, Ibe Mutokon. Yes, um, ha, yeah, yeah, double. Uh, we went through, when they attempted to tender his cautionary statement, we went through a voir dire because uh, uh, it was our contention that the state, uh, cautionary statement was not voluntarily obtained. They, they were seriously, seriously tortured. So we went into a voir dire. Uh, a trial a trial. within a trial. We went into a voir dire. 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 We went into a Abeo kuole kono nungu tumo, wadali ulole ya sabu kuoni nina tana ata nyaming, ngake wole tikiti be kiti kono, mfanali nga ata mandi wole silola. And the Vwadri uh, trial, which is a trial within a trial, was to test the voluntariness of that particular statement to see whether it was obtained, you know, through torture or other forms of duress or undue influence. And uniaje aliewo kiti be kiti kono aliyake. Wo alifta kalonne wo kuma kongol miyalon ko ya wole tab wo mo min bulu ya min tumi ya safi alifta kalon kumi yo kuma kongo tabul nyamu foya tabul deto lo kono bang abe ya detendile ya ta wole foya lipale foya tajire ya al al kitiyo alifta kwa wole long wala na koko kiti ngakitiyo ke kitiyo kono kuteng. Yes, that was the main purpose uh, for a vadir. Wole mo adali lo tide purka kiti ke ke kiti be kiti kono and. Um, Yaya was the first uh, to go through uh, Vwadi. What was the strength of his case in terms of his allegations of torture against the state? Um, I wouldn't be able to remember now the details, but he, his testimony, I believe, lasted for four days. And because we had fear that um, uh, the rest of the other accused persons may not have the same opportunity, his evidence was not limited to him in person alone. And every form of torture, every form of violation, Every form of abuse was captured in his narration. Looking at your client and some of the other accused persons, was it clear, was it apparent, just by looking at them, that they had been indeed tortured? Yes, indeed. In fact, as at the time when they were arranged, some of them had their injuries. They had not completely healed. I believe was a camera came here and testified before the... Uh, TRRC. Wasa was able to pick his broken teeth, you know, um, in the NIA, in the hall where they were tortured. He had it in his pocket and it was tendered as an item of exhibit in the trial. Uh, we even subpoenaed for the medical record of the treatment, uh, the medical treatment they were subjected to as a result of the torture. And the doctors were willing to come to provide that evidence, but there was state interference in that also. 
me ya lon ko wolum lopitan kayto luti doctor holi menu safe ni molie biri o tajire nya nya jawo kela ye man torol ni baladdi me ngulu menu soto adon doctor holu fogolu paretale wulita pour kana o sede ya roke bari ko take man sakunda ya dabula je kunduta doctor holu nyato pour wolu kana na o sede ya rola how did the state interfere in that process ah say man say da dun wo ko to nyadila when we prepared our subpoena and sent it to rvh the place was punctuated by the NIA officers who were there. They physically threatened them that whoever produces those. In fact, the doctors ended up not coming to court. Threatened them not to come to court. Mo call yin dundi. Prul doctor ol yena yena wo ko senendi. Min fo ngake da fang. It wo doctor ol yin kaito ol min be bulu kaito ndi ko ko tonya tonya ni ne keta we wasa ya nyongo utole ya lipa la nyongo be bota da kono. Yeti yeti silendi lo fang ko karo eko mo mo na ta kiti bundato. How did you come to know about this particular information? We, when we file our subpoena, you know, you know very well as a practicing lawyer, when you file a subpoena, you make a follow up on it. Kapengana wasi da safe ifanga alone ko kulka tama nyame ninga yatra nyukusi wa begere ne safe ro ka ndupur ka ko no masada. I personally follow this issue at the RVH. And they told us that the NIA came there and took those files away. And they do not have them. Did the voir dire succeed in the end? Well, the cautionary statements of all of them were admitted in evidence. And that means it did not succeed. No, it did not succeed. Despite the clear evidence of torture in It was visible on their bodies. So, in fact, the defense counsel had valid fears about the particular judge in that case. And on fang mi lawyer mi yalan ko wole lote fang wey silan da bunda sotole kiti ndi la la kuwa nyinto. Mi nyanta kiti ndi kiti teo kala. Well, that's quite true. Umto nyalti. Can you tell us what happened in the court martial? Isha fo nyano mune na teke wo sojar kiti du la do. In relation to your your client, Liaya Dabo. Me na tete la kile ano la karola kafu me Liaya Dabo. You know, we were all sure they were going to be convicted. Dolbe la ra njina loko ibe soro na le kiri oni kula. Right, but then Bari there was an open discriminatory treatment. Bari ye la mara nyama inata na faramvanzo dunda kuni kona le. Wewe landi kene baldo. This was a court mass. This was a treason involving. People from every sector of our society. Right, that I mean, all the tribes were involved. Um, during the course of the court martial, four of the accused persons were being chained, uh, and that is handcuffed, that is Bunja, Yaya Dabo, Farin Sanyang, and Wasa Kamara. We have Bunja, Yaya, Farin Sanyang, and Wasa Kamara. And Wasa Kamara, you Well, the discrimination was quite apparent. We complained about it. Just like that. But I'm I'm not um, Justice Ajim made an order that it's unlawful, it's yes. um, not Justice right. Justice Ajim narana kango di tuonyala nyungu kulde mea lungo amanyang andung nyantatinyala. These four individuals you mentioned, which tribe did they belong to? Nyumo nano liye milfotem. All four of them were mandingas. Itolomo nano bemo mandingolel. So people of, from all other tribes were part of the trial. They were, um, yeah. It was a light group. Our understanding is that it was uh, the head of the army who insisted that those people must continue to be chained. Right, and this was not coincidence this time? No. In fact, um, I remember at that time we raised the issue. Ajim made a statement that he has made his order, but if 
the authorities are not going to comply with it. He does not want to take it as an issue. Hakilo ba kang sinya sabando nar na ko ni wosi dala kota ke bari jojo ni mem ajimti ay mem fo wala miti ko ko manto nung ay kango dile bari sila ni nyarong kolo mang ni ay kango mendi ni nyarong kolo mang kanta manda ko ni to ora ta kudo ke no la je kota. And during the actual proceedings themselves, were they still chained? But for what I'm not kidding you, I'm from that it are becoming no. For how many were able to sit there? No, they would chain them in the vehicle according to them in mile two. Eh, but it only means for all in the Morocco no. Kabon and Kasi Bumba to keep able to chain now all to Morocco no. And then they will bring them up to Yundum Barracks. If they not let for Yundum, let's order the court now. So they escort them inside the officers' mess where the court martial was taking place. Isn't that a example of officers' mess to damage the alarm? Kiti o njenga tarke o bungo njenga kon. And thereafter they will remove the cuffs. Jeto isine la bulo chain chaini ro bulo njenga chaini njenga. When the matter is adjourned, they will again cuff them in the court and then escort them. Nini kiti o njenga lunga sa and criminal trials in the Gambia are usually done in public, is that correct? Can you tell us if anything unusual happened in this particular case? Yes, on the day of the judgment, as a matter of fact, the whole conduct of the proceedings was done in the open. Ko ko anyanta nyama ko sikiti onyimbe ala tamu ndriblo onyimbe kera nyama vika ra jamala kono kumanu. On the day of the judgment, lungo mnyanya na kiti onyanya kundula. I was the first to arrive. Ntele kera mo follow the men fura dingira nyento. When I reach, birum fura. They said we were supposed to wait under a tree. Ko nyanta mbatu la iro 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 dole koro. So the arrangement was that they wouldn't allow members of the press and members of the families of the accused persons. So I said, if that is the situation, we will boycott the judgment. And after the delivery of the judgment, we will make a statement to condemn it. Do you know why they took that particular position on this particular day? From what we understand is that the, it was the head of the army who was interfering. Because he had a sense of apprehension what would be captured in the content of the judgment. Who was the head of the army at that time? It was my own brother, Lantombo. His full name, please. It's Lantom Bontamba. Lantom Bontamba. And he obviously took direct orders from Jame. Yes, of course. Okay. How did that end? Well, we maintain our ground that uh, we will not enter the judgment hall unless all the... Uh, pressmen who were present were allowed access. And same with members of the families of the accused persons. So they thought we were going to give in, but um, to their disappointment, we stayed put. When they realized that time was running out, they said now, well, they will allow members of the media to come in. They invited us to go. We still again refused. He said family members must all be allowed in. And they said they were not going to do so. We refused to go in. In the final analysis, they were making calls, office of the president, army headquarters. They had no choice. They had to allow everybody. And judgment was delivered. Yeah.
Uh, but after the delivery of judgment, we filed our appeals. Uh, and we filed filed our appeals. We filed our appeals. And 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 we filed our And And we filed our appeals. 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 And we filed and I strenuously followed on the records, the appeal records. File could not be seen anywhere. File on Amanjeno handing kira killing. Not anywhere in the judiciary. Kiti Bunda nyendo handing kira killing. File on Amanjeno. Made a personal follow up on this with the judge advocate. Ye George on Yemi alongo atelebe lori nyendo kiti o kunda nyendo kuna na kunya kula na mbula ta no kang puruka nyini. He told me he has nothing to do with the file on the date. He delivered judgment. He gave all the records to the army. Ako atamang fence ora be menke la njim file o bala file o njim lungo mena judgment ilukiti o kunto njia karang wunungo njia case file o njia daya di soja rola njia. I wrote letters. A letter all safe. Number of times. Sinya jama. It follow ups. Ngai bula ngam ngam bula ta no kang. Nothing happened. Were you able to proceed with a substantial appeal without those records? No, we couldn't. Ani ma oke no mambula no oke case ni no purunga no masara ngaji be kado mamfeni. Not one single appeal was had. Ani appeal killing murunga kiti killing mangke akodi. To now we have not set an eye on that file. Ani kabi mbem bitlo mendo file oni nyake so mambula aka. And in fact, their constitutional right to appeal was violated. Certainly. Ah, ani mui la ni la nyanto tini ata la puru ni kama la puru case ni kui la kidi amoni ni puru aya murunga ngaji be ku ye la nyanto tini ata. But that was not into the government at the time. But woman, ojama sekunda jama ano la unyuma ke kuti itolbulu watu la. Thank you very much. Ambalak. Mr. Ture, there was another case in which you handled where, as a consequence of certain decisions, a particular high court judge, I believe he was a magistrate, then made he was dismissed. Mr. Ture. Malam fahy kilo bahkan nak berada dia mudah kita nukiri bunda atau mialan kau dah kata je, wawatu wamarining, wamuning kiri di lad dengan lati kafu magister tu aman kena jojo te follow. Ina tena bayar ala dua kuala. Fahy sefem phone onya wataban. Yes, that was the case of IGP versus Keba Conte and Seku Conte. Ha, walaum case di meja longko. Ah, polis ol lem bahkan aning Seku Conte Keba Conte itu le bawa case ini kono. But let me say before I proceed with that, there was. A lot of interference, even in civil matters. Eh, barang barang ngaku mandim for jangan jangan nampak nyumbu mau follow la case follow follow. Ku jamal lepas jamal alam ko, dah bule jamal lepas jamal alam ko ikat ke mol mol damal mol ni mol damal la case tu, dah bule jamal lekat ke aku nyindo. It was the order of the day when you have a matter a dispute with someone, you just go to any one of these generals. Eh, ini ini nampu ko ni taman diri nyata ni wajah mana la nu ni ni mau ku la nyu bula bula nyu tema drum ikan mengkara ikan ranya nyata orang kunto orang kau lekan tu surtu ni tangan kau bunda mula. And they had no hesitation; they will interfere in the matter. And dong kubu eh buka hani tong kuto orang fang ikan dah bula ko ni kono la. The case of the Conte brothers. Ning Conte 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 fulu ni. Um, they bought a set. Um, it's their younger brother. One. Abdullah Conte. He don't come out all the way. He come from Abdullah Conte. He bought a parcel of land. I can hold all the sang from one Abdullah Cham in Sukuta. And then I ask a member of Mobulu. He come from a Kendingili. He come from Abdullah Cham Sukuta. But is that all? They went through the transfer process. It had a cool member. The lawyer landed in America. Who knew that transfer through Taya is a unka. When you do, you marry daughter. Can you marry daughter? Apparently, you are demanding. Unbeknown to the two brothers, the transfer document had not. Been completed. The transfer procedure had not been completed. In court of law, remember, we have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. We have been told that the court has not ruled in London. They thought that that, that that was all about the transfer process. So they took that transfer document and kept it. It But it was in the same year of the purchase. But it was killing on the water men of Firoketa. That they fenced the land. More than ten years down the line. Sangitang Kwonyu Firo Nyinkola. 
Abdullah Cham came to the site and said that he did not sell to them all that parcel of land. Ying Abdullah Cham ying anata keno ying dingira ying tuako amani ying keno ying dingira yeme bia sanzang amo wafu ima. And the fencing took place. Sanzang diro keta. In the ear of the porches. Sango sango mena ufiro keta. And when they were about to commence fencing work, according to them, they invited him to come to the site for him to confirm that this was the piece of land that yeah. he sold to them. Abdullah Cham invited him to come to the site So when he raised those queries that uh, these people have fenced more than the fair area that he sold to them. Bring at another now, Maka when you find in the Adak on a cafe, when you mold the Aled Lalas, Aled Lalas and Samuel and Contenga, we were from Altam Bitale. He went ahead and knocked down part of the fence. Attendant Purka Fenso Dingrado Dake Kaboy. So they lodged a complaint against him at the police. In Atana Kunin Taya Bole, we police Dingrado. Police went into the matter. Police sold out a Dingiran into. Um, they charge him. They took him to the court. When they, when they were taking him, they did not notify the complainants. He went to court and uh, he pleaded guilty. He was caution and discharged. Complainants in the meanwhile did not even know that the trial took place. So he then went and filed a civil case against them. And the magistrate court. It was in the magistrate court that the two complainants in the criminal charge came to realize that in fact their criminal complaint reached the court and was determined. And the magistrate dealt with the criminal complaint? I cannot remember now on top of my head because, uh, like I said, the complainants did not know of the trial. I was my, it was my humble self who tried to trace the, the close file. We, photo we photocopied it and it was in the file that I confirmed that yes, he, had, he has actually been taken to court and he pleaded guilty. And he was photocopied. I cannot now remember who was the magistrate. Abdullah Cham did not pursue the civil case. It was struck out. Now he, with the backing of some people, he went to lodge a complaint at the police. He said the transfer documents that uh, the Conte brothers had, those documents were forged. He said, so the police looked into the matter. Police uh, They charged the two Conte brothers. And let me say this. But that Abdullah Conte who bought this land. Ning Abdullah Conte ning me along ko atile ning keno ning sang was not charged. Eman two million denga kango. And the sale took place in his presence. It was his elder brothers, who, who one of whom had custody of the document. It was those two elder brothers who were charged. So, matter started in Brikama Magistrate's Court. After the close of the prosecution's case, I made the police all of an alley to the other one in the ammonia. That's all. Who was the magistrate involved? The file kept changing from one hand to the other. File on in to the like a filing cabin in magistrate door, car magistrate door. I remember at the beginning it was my name, follow Nakiro Bagam, my name, 
who I think um, got uh, appointed by the GRA. But then, subsequently, it came into the hands of Magistrate uh, Jaita as it then was. What was his first name, Magistrate Jaita? He's now a judge of the High Court. So, he looked through the file after my no-case submission. Just explain what a no-case submission is in summary. The no submission simply is that um, when the uh, state brings a charge against a person, no case of business near my two account, well, and Nimans and Carola warrant of Mende to Miro de Mokanda near to Miro not in the Mokang to Kitidlato. And the uh, witnesses for the prosecution have all testified. Said all mayor and go live in Mansara Carola or on the police or Carol be not a yellow said and Rudy. If you consider in your mind that uh, if not. Made out a prima facie case. Little a mirror lord, it remember lord in your moon into me more than it may along it in it in mirror son of Mora. You know, the dear moment that you want to come on me line in Kitty and Yatin or young, you want to come on Sahara with the Kitty Mola. What is a prima facie case? Mona prima facie case. Prima facie case is to lead evidence linking the accused persons to the offense. Well, in prima facie case, well, and said Andrew the mayor along about two million morning about Chokila, two million in a year to me. So you can ask the court to dismiss the, the, the charge. Jeto, ita member lawyer ngo tumi rimo ni yezi kani ndro keno kiti kiti onyati no kafu eko kafu kiti eko pur ay bayro ke tumi rola emenda o tumi moni ngam. So in essence, the prosecution had not met the minimum requirement in terms of the evidence that they were required to produce for that case. Amunta prosecution wolem police police wolem warando mansala karola itolman kuma hakan sahari ngo di kiti di kiti onyati no member sababu sababu lako pur kiti o elako nintu mole tu miro mele kang ye asorata ikanne. Well, that was our application. Sometimes you succeed on it, but sometimes it's dismissed. Well, I'm told that Daniel Dado. What do I care for? Because Daniel or Kitty Obul. What do I care? Ganiye lebaru. What do I care? Boile. So when Mr. His was His was Jaiti went through the file, he discovered that in fact this land is not situated within the jurisdiction of Brikama Magistrate. Oh, what all? What all? What all? His was Jaiti. Bring a tata tata. Any file or kunobi jube aya yele a jube aya yele. Anata na kala muda niko. Tonya tonya. Ninge no nyimem fa alongo abedi amoko no. Kene le abedi ngira to me alongo amanda Brikama la dikiti bunda dungira koro. So he struck out the matter. Anata na case nyimbai. He was sacked. Yeah, bai. At the phone. Was arrested. Yeah, muda. Detained. Yes, indeed. He was in self-charge. Sorry. He was in self-charge. He could not have two million at a phone call. Did this kind of thing ever happen before um, to a magistrate where they were arrested, detained, charged? In Kusifal Nana Casoto, in Kitindir Lalaba, Madame de Alanco, Kimota, yes, indeed, like a Nana, two million lake and yes, and Bakitola before. As a direct result of the decision that they made during the course of their duty. And no, Okana, and also from Sabah Moon and Olam Nintu to Lake Homer and Thai. Doko ni kono me alongo wale mira doko tamu dini yari ina na nyingu oleka ufakule me alongo akakela akela ba yes it was a common practice ha kule me alongo dali na kule nu menga kenu to sack magistrates magistrate robai okay but to go to the extent of actually arresting them detaining them and charging them but if funny hani kabi imanda ugoro na kibaya roka tafu ika ike muda ike sindi dula kileni ika tumiro oleka I think that started in the case of his worship Jaita. Ngamira oda mutata his worship Jaita la watu la watu mem amu wote. But there was a second, uh, there was a repeat, uh, repeated incident also. But hani kabi murungka kuro fana kire mianu ko amurungka nta akera. Uh, one of our traveling magistrates in Jaring. Uh, na magistrate do beje me na kiti tela do beje me alangu akata hama le akata dingiraldo me uh, beje Jaring. Magistrate Danso. Ikafai magistrate Danso. Was also arrested. Adefana ina nea mutale. Detained. Yeah, sindi dula killing. And charged. Ye tu mirole de nga kangoda. Uh, in fact, his detention. Andung hani kabi ala muto ka sindi dula killing fa. Um, came during the impasse. Aketa wati la watu mbenda politiko hataji ube hataji ni mbake mbangu nkanja wole mdizemba. I think it was after Jame's departure. And aketa nyame wole nkabiri ya Jame bangu obula. That he was released from detention. Watu na ya abula ka bondi mudokono. Do you remember the case of Magistrate Jabang? Foy hakilo si Magistrate Jabang fana na kuo mutanova? Yes, I believe he to... Njiki taate fana nta ha? Forgotten about, but I think a similar incident. He was not charged, but he was detained. Can we just 
look at the last case because yes. I'm sure the commissioners want to go home before we wrap it up. Yes. Of the NIA Diamond case. The NIA Diamond case. NIA Lau Lulu I got the tip of the information. Ngakibaro le sota kono. From one Nafi Jamme. Mo kilimbulu igafu me Nafi Jamme. Nafi, I believe was his tattoo ya Jamme. He was is from Kanila. Nafi de nji kita ko abari musule mati me alonko ya Jamme abari musola nunga bora Kanila. But she happened to have known Dr. Alamin. Bari aketa ay Dr. Alamin ay alon. One day in the evening. Lun kiling ularo. She called me to inform me that doctor has been arrested. I am commanding Kang Kalamuda ni nina ko doctor de ya mutale. By the NIA. And the men ya muda wale mna NIA. And she told me that he he has been seriously tortured. Agbara ni mfanya le ko yeyo ya tajire ya ba kila de. And that she was afraid that if I did not get up quickly. And dunga kwenye ko na be sila ringi na ninga tarante ma wuli tari yaringe. He could lose his life. Asike no ayefu asi ala 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 baluola. This was in the night. Ni kera suru ala. I told her, well, call me in the morning following the tomorrow. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I went to office, this was on a Saturday, I forgot about doctor's issue. So Nafi gave me a reminder call. And I quickly rushed to the NIA. When I arrived, I insisted that I wanted to see Dr. My client. I was just arriving when they were closing their main gate. I held onto the door of the door, uh, gate. The gentleman told me that I couldn't see him. I told him I must see him. If I cannot see him, I was going to petition the vice president as head of the security council to Be raise my concerns. President no longer, me mala vice president, me move bankola vice president, be safaro kela me tu mala me na telu be marlin kanto ni tanga da bunda mulbela, be be safaro kela kakala mudande. When I told him that, during our fire, he was overwhelmed. Ode ona ona na silendle. Couldn't know what to say. I said I must see my client. Where do you like? I'm balan dango e fonsi na kile ano jere. Fall left out and fall malafi banin left mbajela. Then he said he was going to send word inside to the directors if they would give me. Jail from at the funding kenyi sila akonye ko mina kumbe kumakam furan la na nyaton ko makaju be fo abe silodi la na purunga silodi la dum. It was the officers in, inside who refused. Officer wolem do kulan be kono ta wolel balanda. I was informed by Nafi. That doctor was uh, taken out of the NIA uh, premises. Yeah, doctor found in the NIA was in Zambani in Konole. In the night. Sudola. Because of the severity of his condition. Katung alaku alhalo belari nyame. Was taken to RVH for. Yes, Samba Bangola lo bitan baro purkara jara. So Monday. Tenola. I made contact with the German consulate. Eh, German the consulate na yomoi. Because uh, there were two German nationals involved. Kadung uh, German banku dimfula wala ba ko nyin kono. Apparently the NIA gave those people to an appointment for them to go back on Monday. Kadung wato la NIA le wato di wala pour wol si sey yeb findi jango sam tenangola. So I escorted them to the NIA. Nten tambite nyaro ndata eh ngeta mi ndata NIA NIA. But when I reach I wanted the confrontation between the between my clients and the NIA officers to be in my presence. Abulaikujabi refused. Abulaikujabi balanda. Did so with arrogance. I can tell him balia phone kono. Jawi akono. Sangaro. Sangaro. I spoke to. I left the German nationals there and I went back to the court. In German bank we didn't go mul nye bulaje ntara kidi dular. Then I did my investigation. I interviewed them. They give me a detailed account of how they were treated. And how the doctor was also brutalized. In fact, Dr. Mahala told me that the last time he saw Dr. Alamin, he was being dragged on the floor and he was not sure if there was life in his body. Then I decided to write a petition to the Director General.
Do you know the reason for this treatment? Well, the Germans, Dr. Mahla, Dr. Dr. Mahla Gambia to purchase diamonds. Another Gambia Bango Ganjan Purka Lulosang diamond. He purchased eight pieces of diamonds. Uh, pieces uh, say I will listen. And say. in fact, he went to Freetown. Another not a free, free town. He didn't Saralian. buy the diamonds here in the Gambia. Sorry? He, he went to Freetown. Another Freetown, Saralian Bank. And he purchased the diamonds there. I diamond or Sanje. And he was given his certificate of origin. And we are not in Kaito Diala, remember at Wanyan Lako, and you move diamond on it. He, he had a friend called Nicholas Westphal. I tell him what was the government, Nicholas Westphal. Nicola had a girlfriend. Nicola Sungro do Babulu. She was the NIA informant. She disclosed to the NIA that these people have money and diamonds. Would you happen to know the value of those diamonds? I cannot remember now how much they purchased the diamonds. There diamond were eight pieces. Uh, so they also had dollars. Can you just enlighten me, um, Mr. Ture, because I'm a bit confused. The possession of diamonds, um, is that a national security threat? Why were the NIA involved? No, there was no security issue involved. They only descended on them to extort their money and their diamonds from them. Because at that time, the NIA enjoyed a complete total blanket impunity in this country. And they were lodged at Senegambia Hotel. Senegambia Hotel it was this girlfriend who informed the officer commanding the NIA in, I think, uh, Badala Park area. And they went and attacked them and dispossessed them and of their money, 206,000 dollars. Eight pieces of diamonds. Personal cell phones. And their briefcase. So the NIA was turned into a criminal gang? So I wrote a letter, a petition to the director general. Not in a letter was have a puruka director general in Cordatio in Gakram. That he should surrender his officers to the inspector general of police. Kakanin in Nako, Aladokula, Yimpura, Isa, I deep police or Lakundin Kola. That the matter should be investigated. And Nai Tandi Jefan and Gokoni and Yanakis Kisilale. I uh, copied the entire establishment, that is, the, all the permanent secretaries, all the ministers, all the foreign missions. And Nar Nadoku Bundal Besafe, permanent secretarial minister. And I blew it in the private media. And do not now come on in Janjan, yeah, Kibar Janjan was the independent. It was the independent that published the news. Kibar Bunda may Bafala independent, well, and Kibaroni will not have an idea. It was a damning revelation against the NI. Mukula to Kulola Mealonko Kulu, one year little Mealonka, Boyta and I Elkan. Following day, Osamo. Independent published the dismissal of all the NIA officers who were involved. Independent Kibar Bundani Narana Safaroke, NIA Melanco, Bebula, or Kuanikunoko, Bebaile. But let me say this that was the first of its kind. But Badunganyan for Walamu Kuoti Melanco, Nyu Akunyo, and Yonko Keta. The NIA have never been dismissed for any unlawful act. NIA in an ame by Baral Melanco, Baral Menke, and Luanta Yabarol. Before that time. Watola. They've never been arrested for any unlawful act before in, that time. In an ame muta Baral Melanco, Luanta Yabarol, and in an ame mutala. So the government acted responsibly. Uh, they set up a panel of investigators. And they were investigated. The report was issued. And they were charged and taken to court. And they were prosecuted. And except one. They were, they were all convicted. 
but one was uh, uh, acquitted on appeal. Modo bejele wo yeu bulale ufanonso rada nyame aketa murunkan nan kiti yolde ibap mele appeal. What happened to the diamonds? Wolulu wol nyingi nata kenyadi. Still not been recovered. Anika bing wol manje. Neither the money. No any of the personal possessions. The German government asserted all forms of pressure on the Gambia government. Through the European Union. After now, the diamonds have not been. Do you have any idea, any rumors about where, in whose hands they possibly could be? Well, when the matter was uh, going to the panel, one of the officers, NI officers involved, one of the suspects, sent a friend of his to me. He said he wanted, this, he wanted to disclose the location of the diamonds. He had the money as well. Only if he would get my cooperation. I said, if he was willing to do so, let him do so. I, I was willing to engage headlong that person, no matter who he is. But at the same time, they were being prevailed over by Abdullah Kujabi. Uh, Abdullah Kujabi was promising to reinstate uh, them. So they could never get that done. Because he was also finally removed from the NIA. He was transferred to Brikama as governor. Yes, but when I published that letter, letter and uh, they were sat. Yeah, I remember lawyer Jobate. Baba Dinding. Baba Dinding. We met along the corridors of the court in the high court. He said, Bori. He said, I won my case without trial because of you. He said, the NI sees his clients' um, vehicles and other possessions, and he has strenuous efforts to recover them. And he filed an action before the High Court. And he said, he said, he said, he but the case was dragging. But when you publish that, your dangerous letter. Uh, when you you publish that, your dangerous letter. They called me and said, come and collect all your clients' properties. As a matter of fact, that time, in question, was the time when you were supposed to be As a matter of fact, that time in that time in question, was full of equipments, movables, items that unlawfully seized from people, that they, they discharged everything. Yes. Yes. All those items. Yes. Who were the particular accused persons in that case, the, the NIA officials? I can only remember the names of Two of them now. Salimina Drame. Salimina Drame. And Kajali Jawara. Uh, there was a boy, so I can't remember the rest of them, their names. And do you know if that particular case had any political um, influence whatsoever? Did those diamonds land in the hand of anybody in the higher echelons of the government? I did not know the person in the... Uh, I did not know in whose position they were. But as a matter of fact, when this issue arose, the officers who actually raided the Germans in their hotel room were also arrested. 
And I believe that time they must have recovered the the authority, senior authorities must have recovered all this position. Jikita what wala nu ile fanan ikolo fanan o ena ile ile nyato ngol nyinga sikeno yo fengu sort of fengu nyi menta nyi jama no buli yo fanan tawo. But they quickly released them. But it tari yaringe ina ne bulale. And they wanted to cover up the story. Ile fta ko kuni nda kamabo. Is it possible that the diamonds? For asikeno le banyi lulu nying. Are still in the hand of those NIA officers who had recovered them initially. Did they benefit from? Hani kabi ya benyi ndai mono. Fasi kieno la benyi ndai mono ni morando ni lulu ni memu da hani kabi ila mira rofa mira asi kieno la kuwa bitharle la maroko no la ba. I don't think that was possible. Hani ma mira ube kieno la. My strongest conviction is that they must have surrendered them to the authorities. Until lata mena mena bamba nta vana wole mnyindi kuwa andu si kieno yao lulu olinging ya tare ya di la nyarong kola nu waro la. When I published the letter, bringa o letter onyinta ngajanja. The then Director General Abdullah Kujabi was very annoyed about it. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. He saw that as the strongest challenge to the authority of the NIA. No, the very day the letter was published. I had the matter I went for in SL Magistrates Court. I was coming. I had one of the small boats. Mm, then I received a call. Mm, and I received a call. Mm, and I received a call. Mm, and I received a call. A young lady in the office of the in the NIA called me. He said, uh, Are you lawyer too? I said, Yes. I said, Yes. Are you lawyer Toure? I said yes. Akonyeko for itelem lawyer Toure ti banka ya. Said I'm calling from the office of the president and I headquarters. Akonyeko mbe do kumandro ke gang president office office holdo me alongo wale be president and I la office holdo me be president office holdo. Said the director general has instructed me to inform you that you are needed at the NI headquarters. Akonye director general kongwe kala mutende ni ndako iko isulati la direct NI la kordabar. I told her. Nka eko. Tell your boss you have conveyed the message. Afo ile nyaro ngo ko kibaro ni yafu dan dimale. Then I switch off my phone. Nganna mobile offer. I went home straight. Ndara su. It was much later. Nyaro demanding that I was discussing with the then DPP Ajim. Mbe nin DPP Ajim be kachaka. Then he told me the scenario of what happened between himself and Abdullah Kujabi. And that's Abdullah Kujabi How that happened was uh, when these people were arrested, uh, were being prosecuted in Kanifing. On one occasion, he complained to me. The DPP complained to me. He said I was not following up on the matter. Ako mantra ko nyin no masata kan. I said to him but I came to court and I gave my testimony and that's all I can do. Ngay ko na da kiti dularo andu nga na sedan do di la andu nsi odona keno. So you were a witness in this particular case. Amunde da fana was a witness in the matter. Fana musi edol de nyin case nyin ko no ha. Mu fana musi edol ti. Because the Germans could not come back. Ka to nyin German bon ko dingo nyoli bon ko dingo limam. They were afraid of their own safety. Ka to isila tay fanga tan ko la. So I had to go to court to give evidence. O to asulo be jele burunde fan ko dingo eta kidi dularo do nga sedan de rodi. So that was the moment he told me. O war wala mo war to de akonya ko. He said you know when you publish that letter. Akonya kabri ki letter o nyin kabri ya janjang. Abdullah came to my office. Abdullah na dan na officer. He was fuming with rage. Eh, abe sorry, can you repeat? He was very angry. Abe kamfari mbake. He said he Abdullah asked him, who is this lawyer? Ako Abdullah ni ninga. Aka yajwa la ni ni lawyer. He said he's a young man. He's around. Aka yani mu lawyer ndungo di bara bejan abe janne. He said we must arrest him. Ako first ni na mutalal. He said you want to arrest him. He said yes. Aka yako ilafta mutalal. Aka yha. He said, in all my working relationship with you, I want to advise you today. And I want you to sit down. And you keep quiet. And I'll close my office. I'll lock it. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. He said, did you read this letter? He said, yes. He said, then he didn't understand it. He said, I understood the letter. He said, no. He said, Abdullah. He said, the gentleman who wrote this letter. Yes, if you want to arrest him, you will arrest him. But that will not scare him. I can assure you that. 
And if you release him, and Uniabula, he's going to destroy your life. He said, there is another part of the story which he has not published. And that will be a direct attack on you in person. He said, when he told him that, then he realized he was feeling cold. He said, if you arrest him, you release him. But if you release him, you will destroy your life. And that was the absolute truth. Because briefly before that diamond incident, I had investigated the matter involving the Al Rawi brothers. I had already investigated the matter involving the Al Rawi brothers who were taken to Guantanamo Bay in. And all that evidence that I had was pointing at Abdullah in person. And said But that was it. Um, he left the scene. He went to Brikama. That was the end of the story. But yes. the diamonds uh They've disappeared forever. Foreign. They disappeared forever. Plus ah, over 200,000 US dollars. And let me also add. Dr. Alamin sold his house in Germany. Dr. Alamin yala kordala wa fi Germany bangkoka. Took that money. Ayo kodota. Invested it in this diamond business. Aya dunni nyin julaya rame mu julo julo julaya. The profit that he was going to earn from that business. Anya na langkau mianso la o business o nyin kono. He wanted to build a children's home in the Gambia. Alafta la dinu la kordala la Gambia bangkoka. That was going to be a charity. Do kela nung la faram bal dinu. I just wanted to uh, make the link that Abdullah Kujabi was the head of the NIA then. Yes, he was the head of the NIA. And was he reported it? directly to the president. Yes. And it is clear from evidence we've received in the commission that apart from that working relationship, there was also a personal relationship between and the two. Well, we understand that he is an uncle to Jami. I don't know how true it is. And that was what forced me to give the letter a nationwide publicity. I didn't want the story to be covered. Much as, much as I was interested in exposing it, I was equally interested in embarrassing the government. Another case is you've been involved in was the cases of Ensa Baji, a.k.a. Jesus, who was the, a former IGP, as well as Usman Jame, former SG. Double the diamond men kono well them me yalo kakete nun police ola kunton kodi kafa Ensa Baji, aning Usman Jame. Perhaps you could just treat the two together just to show what the issues were in those cases and how civil servants were prosecuted, arrested, prosecuted in the courts and dealt with by the regime. This case was one of a clear witch hunt. I'll tell you the genesis why I was charged. He came here before, came here before the TRRC. Another commission Perhaps he did not disclose. But actually led to his arrest. I'll tell you today. Esa was charged because of the Ghanaian case. Esa And the drug that was uh, uncovered in Bonto. When this Ghanaian incident happened. Mr. Baji was not in the country, he was in Sudan. It was when he came, he came to the country, he was in Sudan. It was when he came, that he was elevated, he finally became Inspector General of Police. He was in the country, he was in the country, he was in the country, he was in the country. The 
UN sent a team of investigators. United Nations mwele mdunia bela ukafu banyi nata na kafu mwule nilja mebu na kuonye nkisikisi la jang. When they came, Inata, he was then the Inspector General of Police. police the, there was a request that the police investigate the matter. Jesus refused. Jesus said it was an NIA operation. The police had nothing to do with it. So let them ask the NIA to investigate the matter. Said no, they wanted a neutral body, and that's the police. To investigate the matter. He still refused. Then, as a uh, way of meeting in the middle, he proposed. That he could convey the NIA, the NIA investigation report as IG to the UN. And they all agreed over that. And we He wrote a letter and forwarded the report. I later on in Safi Anarna report on Futandi. Thereafter, Okolala, he told me in person that the then Director General of told him, did, did you realize that the information that you gave to UN was not correct? So he said he expressed anger over the matter. And he was not happy that he was misled in sending a wrong report. It was his belief, and I believe him, that it oh. was Mr. Numo Kujabi, Ko, Mr. Numo Kujabi lemu, who informed the government, the, the president at the time, president that Jesus was going to leak the truth about the NI, yes. uh, the, the Ghanaian incident. Jesus because if you come to the substance of the charges against him, he was accused of being part of a, a ring of robbery incidents in the country. Robbery. At the material time, those robberies were taking place. It was Jesus who arrested all the people involved. He arranged them before the court. And they were convicted. They all escaped from custody, lawful custody, after their conviction and sentence. At that material time, he was, uh, they escaped within the jurisdiction of the KMC. Jesus was then police commissioner in Brikama. It was the commissioner of operations who asked him to assist the police, the Gambia police force, in tracking the culprits back again. And he arrested all of them along the Gambian border, border between the Gambia and Kasamas. And they were brought back and prosecuted for um, escape from lawful custody. And they were sentenced again. Would anybody imagine that the officer who has arrested you has taken you to court? You have been convicted and sentenced. And again, you have escaped. He has arrested you again. He has taken you to court and you have been convicted. It was true that Jesus was part of that ring of conspiracy of the robberies. What was most natural was for them to have accused him. They did not. So they brought him to court and um, 
false witnesses to give false testimony against him. Say the following men that are say that they will be alone. Come and say that they will be alone. Come and say some of them they promised them that they were even going to release them. Do you believe that Allah did not give them a false testimony? If they would agree to give false testimony against him, ni sonda puruka se dandro di se dandro me alon kabe kela se dandro me alon kabe kela se dandro tilo no. And on the stand of that, he was convicted. And we dali lo kanda minat na sorong. And that was information you received from your client at the time. The only thing you are told is that you are clear no bulu wato. Yes, but quite apart from the information, his his narration. I mean, you look at the setting, the the possibilities. Is it reasonably possible that you can arrest me? We can be part of a conspiracy, and I'm getting the largest booty out of that. You arrest me now, take me before the court, get me convicted and sentenced. Uh, for some of them, they were serving a period of 10 years. Ana amange ko nyi lana ko mata mem fonyi bari misal fe ro ko hakilo fo hakilo sinyi mutano ite keta modi e ya mo muta ya tumi ita ta ya mo muta na ya nati ki asamba kitio nyati lon kitio ya ya kitindi kitio ya sorong ay kana maroko no masala maroko no ay kana ina ta na ta ya mo ari muta na ya nati ko take ite i hani kabi o manka nyai ko sai tani o mo le o mo kilingo ite o me alon ko sinya fula ibita ibe muta la ibe nati la iko ina na tumi ro ya ko tani o mo le be fule kiling al kaku ke me alon ko luanta ya la memu boin kan de at no time and how what did you there was no allegation raised by any one of those accused persons that he was part of the ring of robbery which was ongoing in the country moti jemi alonko ay kuma kama fuka fuko ko adabe kafukule kono kono me alonko ni robbery memu muni boyen kan kuoti ani wolo be kafukili who gave the evidence that you are alleging was false in court juma na to sele ando di kafuko ye tumiro yes sorry There was this chap called Ramses. Ni modo be jagaf me Ramses. He came here and gave a testimony. Ara komiso ngoro janne ala seden rodi. And there was one gentleman Abrahman. Ninke kilim fanam be jay bafulo me Abrahman. Think is Abrahman Jallo he was from Basse but he he's late now. Abrahman Jallo ngami ra bora Basse bara bantale sai. Many of the witnesses uh, even had to apologize to him in mile too. Se de jamol be jemi alon ko fon ye nar na ya ye seden rodi akan inar na abolo se de kasi bumba do wato be. So but at the time but we were You go before the criminal court. Because of the proceedings, text message will enter a judge's number. Before the court rise, almost every sitting the NIA would be there. Signal should be given to the judge. And he will rise and he go to chambers and they'll meet him there. Who was the judge that handled that case? Jamal and Kiti Tela, the member of Okiti. He Ikpala handled one of the matters, and Justice Amadi handled the other. Ikpala killing Omuda, Justice Hamadi killing Omuda. And those events that you just mentioned happened in both of their cases in their courts. And we tell you, member for Jamu, you make it a you mulela Kiti Kiti Owatol. Not the, the issue of text messages coming through judges' phone uh, in those two matters, but it happened in other sister cases. So your conclusion is that it is your belief that those charges were bogus. Of course, they were hoax charges. Ah, but nonetheless, the court convicted them. Of course, what about? The, are you finished? Ah, uh, yes, I believe so far. We, we are running out of time. Actually, before you leave, my dear. And so, by Jesus, um, matter. Yes. Is it your assertion, Mr. Toure, that uh, he could not have been uh, party to the massive cover-up um, that uh, followed them on the crime of killing the West African migrants? Well, he he was not in the country. Right. And uh, from the story that I gathered from him, he never wanted the police to investigate the matter. All right, but I uh, think what he did was to forward a copy of the NIA report to the UN. But in the jigger ko ay menge wala ni digo ka ena el la report on ka ota ka copy ni nta ka ki dunia bela banku ba e kay ka fu bañi at least that he told me well, is I that transmitter that perhaps would have linked him the the cover up sorry i say the cover up um, could have been the, 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 the transmitter of the report um, to the un yes but uh, you are indicating that or you are asserting that um, uh, no he could not have been part of that cover up 
what I am, the version that I got from Jesus was this. Jesus that's as at the time when the report was being sent. What he did not know how those people met their death. Okay. Alright, it was after the events that Numo informed him that in fact oh. he died out of wrongdoing. But the question of cover up, I wouldn't be able to express it. Thank you. Council, continue. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Just lastly, the issue of Usman Jame. Okay. Usman was charged with the offense of economic crime. Usman, he had two million denga kangoda wala mnyi tigo fankoti nya ayo barata wala. And was arranged before the magistrate in Banjul Magistrate Court. Yeah, samba kiti mundan dingo to memu Banjul Magistrate Court. The court does not have jurisdiction to hear matters. Pertaining to economic crime. Nonetheless, he was convicted. Even when the court does not have jurisdiction. And in case of the 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 case of Usman Jame case, do you believe they were both politically motivated? And what is your reason? Say for Isa for no go and Sabajila Diamonian and Usman Jama, Bemu Fenetimi and political dialect, political by Connolly, and we take him on daily lesson of Nata Yolefo. I've already told you the background to the answer by the case. And then you find a comment on the answer by the Kuning Alhalo Lada Yame. The case involving the former Secretary General Usman. Usman Jame wala kuwenying ala case ni lara nyame. The dimension that I have raised is the lack of jurisdiction in the court. Nga kuwa la nyame mfoja wale mnyitiko court ni ya kiti ndi kiti bunda mento o kiti bunda man sembo soro purka o tumiri fusifal nyinka kimo kiti nyame. Even if the charge against Usman was true. It should have been arranged before the High Court. But the only reason why they arranged before the Magistrate Court was because the government was certainly confident that they were going to uh, get a conviction against him. So the court's lack of jurisdiction. Right. Notwithstanding the court's lack of and what was the government's interest in his case? Why was he charged and brought before the court? You know, the, I may not be able to go into the details of that, but there was a lot of infighting within the public service. Yes. What was his position? Sorry? Was Secretary General. Secretary General. Amunun Secretary General. The civil service. And he was working directly on the jame. And I would do what he could on jame le koto. So definitely something like that would not have happened if jame did not actually consent to it. Of course, I mean you cannot get the Secretary General dismissed, <coughs> arrested, and charged and convicted without President giving directives. Home to anyaldi Secretary General. Ito also to nola kau muta ka sindi dula kini kato miro denga kango da hani kabi amanda oro kasa mbaki di dula ro ya for President oro de mamfen kala muda ye. Tu malama na bedo kola President oro kato. As well as the previous IGP as well, that would be the same case. Ani ufana police ola kundo ngo nuto ufana la kuol kato nongo la nyam. What happened later was that these directives were in writing. Ningko ninya moro ninka ke safero ledi. The office of the president will write directly to the IGP, uh, arrest this man, uh, investigate and prosecute. President of the office of the police will come to the office of 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 the no, I believe in the case of uh, a copy of that directive came to the court. Yes. It was the case involving Jobate, Pahari. Yes. And you were privy to that? Yes. But in, your, in the cases of your own clients, that but, did not happen? But it was the case of your own clients, that did not happen. 
No, they did not produce any executive directive. Um, if they existed at all. And in my year, I'm not in Kapoko, Safari Yamaro, a member of his presidential office or receive a limon at the Kiliano Lam court. But you believe that this happened, it was orally done because it could not have, these prosecutions could not have happened without the knowledge and the consent of the head of state. Committee, it is a manual, a kitchen, and not a no president of the Inspector General of Police. Remind him mile two without the president giving orders to him. Police are not going to do anything. They are going to do what they are going to do. They are going to do what they are going to do. They are going to do what they are going to do. President is the appointing authority. President is the appointing authority. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We have come to the end of your testimony. We have come to the end of your testimony. And I will now hand you over to Mr. Chairman and the Commissioner. I am very deeply impressed by the report of the Commissioner and the Commissioner. Very detailed and informative uh, testimony. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Toure. Um, uh, uh, we've taken a, a full day of your time, but to uh, come and assist us um, uh, in our uh, fulfillment of our mandate. But thank you very much indeed um, for thank a very so good much. testimony. Abaraka bake kanzul, abaraka bake sedo, bingi eta tilo bie mume, nata si jampru kela sedi andro di, sedi andro mi alonka, kita kumati mi alonka, kumata bake anda asa, asa hayata fana. Commissioners, if you have any questions, please indicate. Imam C, you have the floor, please. Imam C, the left again, yin inka. Mr. Ture, Jerejof. Mr. Ture, thank you. Your, your, your testimony for your testimony here it is very clear wow you like grim chi linga wak ni wak bu wak bing a comment in the wak nga kut bole ko ak sa digir fit we are thanking you the testimonies that you have gathered here and you have stated your testimonies with confidence Wow, lagi binga, lagi dipi binga nak ke, dipi pun juga cara asing yang ada kesatu. Since we ever started this cara asing, we have been hearing your name. Benin lagi setai. Until up to today, when we see you. Why dega dega, selagi bira fenstrom. But truly, you you have did a very good job. Jarang aku kat why teri hud nengah bugi esarew. You have you have encountered difficulties, but still that does not prevent you to show how much love you have for your country. You didn't run away because you love your country. Because you were having the opportunity to travel to anywhere you wanted to live. You will have secured a job there. Because of the love you have for your country. That's the reason why you didn't go away. Man, lima lai lajer, mo indak mo sengga ambis binga comment nak kerok mo mtin ga trap. Ah, the only question I have for you is whether there was a particular day that that day you were very scared and threatened. Okay, thank you so much, Imam C. Ino baraba ke Imam C. Um. I don't know how to <laughs> how to answer this question. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that um, the people who came to my father on a number of occasions to warn him that I should be careful. To the extent that he wouldn't allow me to be outside by Makrib time. Seven, I must be inside the compound. I was also privy to some confidential information. That my name was listed down. But I was not traumatized by that. I knew one thing Jamie was going to leave this country. And I, I have faith in the Almighty. Uh, I know no matter how difficult the challenges were, Jamie was going to leave me here. Yes. Oh. 
if I was threatened, I would have left Gambia. Ninga transila talu Gambia banko mba bula la lengata. Consent yalla. Thank God then. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, Deputy Chair, you have the floor, please. Oh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sagar. Thank you, Buri. Uh, let me add my voice to that of Imam by congratulating you and also to thank you for your courageous stance and against tyranny. Now, having said this, I have got two brief questions. I don't yes. know whether the answer will be. Right. For all you left again. Did, did you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, the first one is How did the overt disregard of judicial values and processes by the judicial. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I must say you have summarized it all. Baraka Bake, Bafala go Yokumoni Yafole Yasu Tiandele Yafo. Um if you walk in the judiciary at that time. Yaja Owato, not able to go a kitty bunda to Owato. There was a time what is sort of done. When in fact when people have problems they don't want to engage Gambian lawyers. What is sort of the founding gam ni mole colour cool sort of book up a from Purka Gambia lawyer double age. There were few who would want to engage Nigerian lawyers. Dental be jelly media along with the flood in Nigeria lawyer called me be the belief is that Katu Latamin and Wallen in the co engage a Nigerian lawyer near Nigerian lawyer. He was able to talk to his brother, Nigerian George. Aba Fero Kalale Praya Diama Aba Aba Adonyoe Adonyoe Miyalongo Omu Nigerian or Jojo Lamati. That even if you have to be convicted, there can be some sympathy for you. Esike Balafa Dabe Tarejel. The Jame completely overrun the system. Jame Kool Kenina Kool Landa Tambi Tamandile. Judiciary was firmly in his grip. But there were a few exceptions. It was all not bad. I remember one young man, Lamin Bai. Uh, he was a magistrate in Banjul Magistrate. You are assured that if you are arranged before him, he will grant you bail. And there were um, um, a sister Gambian judges also. Um, they would uh, come between the state and the and the citizens. And the But the system was that bad. It reached a point when in fact the accused persons were detained along with witnesses. But a cool for another sangara for Labon. More me along go ye to me. And in said all me yantanala said the Andrew Dile K B Mota. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The witness will be arrested and detained. And will not be released until when he gives his testimony. So that was how bad the system was. And he not only asserted um, press on the judiciary, but um, in the criminal division also. He had a fund and he had a fund that was being disbursed by the Ministry of Justice. This uh, issue was raised before this um, very commission. And But it was investigated but he man kisikisiro ka there was not there was not full and complete disclosure 
Because every payment that was made was documented. And I will tell you, in the handing over notes of one attorney general after the order, most of these payments were highlighted. So that was how bad it was. And most of our colleagues, the and lawyers, and the were fatigued. They were exhausted. Some wanted to pack up and wanted to leave the jurisdiction. If Jame was to win in 2016, it was God's time that we had a change. Yes. 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 Found courthouses into military zones. To instill fear into the judges. So that they could uh, influence the judgments. You had the personal experience. But not everyone is Borituri. And, and not everyone is Justice Monaghan. So how did this really affect the judges? in giving out their judgment. Okay, thank you. I think uh, in the recent uh, past, they resorted to bringing the paramilitary to escort uh, Accused persons to court. I think uh, the idea of uh, soldiers um, escorting suspects in court uh, wasn't um, a very common phenomena. It's only when soldiers are involved in treason that sometimes you, you see soldiers. Because it's not uncommon for soldiers to be one of the judges, one of the judge, uh, soldiers misfired his gun. And uh, as at the time when it happened, the judge was very close by. He had to run into our chambers. <laughs> and then he had to office. So many things happened. But... Uh, the picture was all, it was all not bad too. There was interference, but um, yes, um, there were people who actually balanced the show. Yes, among the judges and the magistrates. And I must also say that um, most of this trouble actually would happen in the criminal division. The High Court is divided into various divisions. So if you are not in the criminal division, you, ha you have a peace of mind. Yes. Ah. Thank you very much. You Thank you. Imam C, don't um, uh, shower Mr. Toure with lots of praises about bravery. 
imam si agada mo di miyalan ka ye jay bagal coming ikata jambaro mindi no no i said he he shouldn't shower ha manyana amanyana ko itandi ko itam kere jawaro praises because some um, uh, bravery doesn't originate them um, from him they have the two rays up there syringe some um, does the system and the morris they are the ones um, who make them brave so, you know, so don't um, uh, give him many praises about being brave uh commissioner ka you have the floor please commissioner ka wala lafta sedo nyini kala ko tanke thank you mr chairman ka ini baraba ke chairman thank you mr ture for your wonderful work eh ini baraba ke mr ture me musedo di ila doku kendo ka defending the human rights of your fellow citizens eh kalo eh banku du nyolu ka lo ke la nyanto ta ka kele it's indeed commendable kulem me yalon ko tentro ni jairo be yoto i want to ask you two questions la te nyinin kala nyinin kar fulalla um the first is in relation to uh the reasons that you have given before this commission folom me do lam ni do dali do me yalon ko yewle di nyin commission o nyati ngola jam for why you believed uh mr esa baji was which hunted Munaya sabu ita lara nyin nako Mr Esa Baji ala ko nyin keta kulde mi ala ko nyo bayndo la dum dakono You told us that it was in relation to two issues that is the issue of the Ghanians and the issue of the drugs And no ya fo nyi jam kufula wala ba ala ko ko nyin kono tu mi romel la dakan folo wala mi nyin diko Ghanian wala ko nyin ani flanjan wala mo sira ma fengola ko wote And you've told us why he was uh, persecuted in relation to the Ghanians And no ya fo nyi la ko dalilo me asabu ya kidindi da Ghanian wala ko to I didn't hear you um, narrate the other issue which is the issue of the drugs. Ma moy yekuma fo kuta jam yalon ko wolam ku fulan jamoti yemella kan wolam musira ma fengola ko wati. Can you help us with that? Thank you. Is inde ma no yoto kono fanu. Because an oversight and it was a very interesting observation. Ngina ta wala and wa beta ta baga yeng hatlos burni na wo. You know it was the international intelligence institutions that alerted the gambia government ya jele komi banku do banku masa kundal ni wala do ko bundal ni wala keta bunda de million wala le gambia masa quantity of drugs ko ka foko drug jama was stored in bonto ya ma bole bonto sate it was being peddled and mo le aduni no the perception of the president was that it was jesus ya pasan president ay mim muta wala ñi de ko comme jesus la kata moti who leak that intelligence ni wo ñaton wo wo ko ñi ñaton ko ya ka waña to those institutions wo wo fo nañi na wo and that was the very reason and wo dalilo fo ngale atin why they turn the story around to implicate him the very person i will atna ñi na tañu ko ñi yela mo ndi ka te dundi ko in that allegation wo to mi ro ñi to because uh, this was an isolated spot and if you know jesus on oh, no, jesus long i will tell you a remark made by sydney riley mbafoleni sydney riley of blessed memory he was former inspector general of police i remember one day he picked me in his car we were both going to kanifi magistrate court my vehicle had a breakdown that was when jesus's case was ongoing jesus la diamo be kering He told me Akonyoko He said I wish you well in this matter Akonyoko mba mba nganganyi kendo sete nyin kuoto ebe min kono te nyin He said uh, your client was a very effective field officer Akonyoko e dala nyin kiliano mole miyalon ko ala do ko fanalo ne kendeke even as a junior officer from the training school hani kabrin wato mi yalon ko fanga te mud ata dabula ta du man ko le kono kabri wato mi nebe said you give him any file ko ni file wo file dia no matter how complicated wo file wo la ko so ko le nyaw nyaw he will bring you results within 24 hours abe abe kumol natale nan ne montro metu moni nano ko but jamme himself said it but jamme fanga ya fole he said It's now that i have got the best inspector general of police ako sane fo police wo la kunto ko kendo nga soto referring to jesus abe jesus la wala so he thought sa te amira ko there couldn't have been any other person mo keton teke la no who could have leaked that vital intelligence information mi yalon ko wo wo kuma ko ngi mi ya wo kuma ko ngi wañar without mr baji a tele mr baji ma kalamata so your belief is that jamme knew about the drugs mo ndete la la tambe na wala ngi ndiko yaaya jamme akata mo wolde me yalon ko ay kulon wo sira ma fengol tole 
he didn't want anybody to to disclose it or to leak it and nga molla fi hani mokili membe sodo da kayin ko ko disira ma fe ngolla ko nyinta ka wañar well see i did not participate in that trial ya je ndo da mambulan wo dia mo nyonkono but my brother was the uh, one of the lawyers in the in the case but in ko do ma keta mo di mi da bula ta wo dia mo ko and that is ls camera wala ls camera ti we cannot disclose it all as lawyers da be fola no ba on to mo loyal clients confidence ya long ko me ni la client no te mo ku lo nya da taraji but if you would go through the cross examination records ya je ni ta ta wato min na shed ya ndo di be nyin karo ni jabro when i was cross examining silaba samate ato mi ya long ko be silaba samate nyin kaka the issue about kuola minta the origin of those drugs come nyin drogo ni botan nan dami and who was behind it and nyin mimba ku koma was clearly captured ya wo ngo lonne he denied but i put it to him ate balantala but nga ka tole ko yes um let me tell you this but nga nyim fo ya is it reasonably possible for us ke no ban that uh, such an operation come wo do ko nyaani can take place in a country ay ke banko ka mi yalan ko without any solid arrangement with the government of the day i had tara hanib de amu manke ye nyom moy masakunda ni wo mol tema all of the people involved are foreigners mol mi yalan ko be da bi je wol manke jam banko di ngolti not one gambian among them ani gambia din kilinte ko you ship two tons of cocaine inside the country ye na ton fula dundin na nyim banko kanjam and then you get on and about the trading it and in other form for your dirty form car business car work we are all not sleeping in this country it will be one to see no any bank or can there must have been some high degree of complicity ku bi jele mi alon ko mo bi jele mi alon ko wol da ba ko nyun ko nale and you would be surprised and abi kele terima ko that not with standing amendments to the law on drugs ana tara fa hani bi e falindro ga dua loi la militaire imposing in fact that penalty ka foko fam comme ni ya mudé bul rek loi fenkata nyande the venezuelans were subsequently pardoned and they were all released from prison and dunia jibe wo mol mi wo venezuela dingol dingol ina tane kling kling bulale they only served a very short period it had a casual to come for what in dindoro at least if the state was completely innocent about it na tara mo sakunda nyi ma hani fel long nyi ko nyindo they shouldn't have given them uh, this thing uh, uh, they should have they shouldn't have given them pardon e ma nyana kay am fo ke no for the largest shipment of drugs in the nation kata fo sakat ma drogo mi am muta muta da banko ka wala gina warta drogo be di in our entire history na tariko be mu meto and not only drugs na manke drogo da ma they also had ak47 machine guns with them but ak47 machine fen ko kidol be nyun gele and that was the latest version of the ak47 and the wol mo kuta 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 ak47 kuta kuta let at least and if you say this uh, i wouldn't mind much about drugs but at least the drug or fanala ba the the gun peddling aspect of it but you come in do kidol min da keta je in my opinion de fe na miroto so that been such a weighty consideration on the part of the government not to have granted them any form of pardon wo fo nyanta kele fenne de man sa kundala fanala min nyanta tina la so my conclusion is that samba no ko mol laba na those who came here mol mi ayi nata jam came here on a, an arranged platform wol nata la ko mi ye kool they will enjoy impunity ko mi binale ye kool ke ndu fe da bolaje what they traded and ye wa fudu and not was going to come go be wala kan andu hani fenta bolaje but for the international alert but ye ko mi san they would not have been arrested but danya ide mutala no Thank you my final question any ni ngar laban we've all commended you for your excellent work dol be tendu nge jay la do ko kendo la na i know imam has asked you a very funny question na la no imam ni ni ngar ni ni ngar le mea lonko ni ni ngaro ni a a a mane a fenke da bunun ke da jela ma ku ni ni ngaro la nde but you worked in an environment which was very difficult bari te do ko ke dan nan na me ya lonko dan dan ni ko le ada bakel nu as your colleagues did ko e do nyo ko tagon ya ka nyamen Uh, so my question is what kept you going and what was your most inspirational 
um, moment in your career at that time. Ndenge nyine nyine ngaro mende wa say mune nara ne hamende hani say mune nara ne tendende pour que la do ko ke la loya ya la carola ke tendende e be do ko ke kan ka bi ba kan nyame. Well, it was only God. Alalem do. Tonya tonya alalem. Yes, and I must say I I was given to a lot of prayer also. Ono ko na do nga do ajama le soto. Yes. On my own accord, I sometimes it even affects my work, my coursework. Yes, when I close from from office, I have no business with my books. So that's the other part of my life. Thank you once again. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Ture, if you have any concluding remarks to make, you may please proceed to do so now. Mr. Ture, I have been here for a long time. 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 I thank God that I have sailed through this. And let me emphasize that uh, I owe my uh, very life to the Almighty. He was the only, he was the creator who protected me and guided me throughout. Uh, what we have gone through as a nation was highly traumatizing. Most of what comes to us as lawyers is what is visible. The physical abuse on our clients, the infraction of their rights, and so on. But I remember I was talking to Dr. Sise of Kololi Clinic. I referred a client to him who was a subject of abuse for him to examine his body and uh, do a medical report. Um, he told me I have seen the gentleman he referred to me. He said, but the two sister professions, law and medicine, he said, I think we know more than the lawyers. In terms of the trauma which is uh, meted out on victims. They said there are certain aspects of their experience that they would not disclose to their lawyers. They said I give you a case in point. He said an elderly gentleman from within the community of Brikama. Highly responsible person who has a very large family. He has got um, uh, children and grandchildren. He said he was brutalized by the junta. All over his body. But that was one small part of it. He said um, the detailed part of the agony was that he was castrated. Um, he said when the man told him this, um, he then asked him, why don't you go to the press and uh, publicize this. He said the man turned around and told him, he said, I don't want to embarrass my family. My uh, wives, my children and grandchildren. So he said, uh, I must keep quiet over this till my grief. Uh, for me, it's uh, and I believe for all of us, it's a learning 
experience. I used to have a great deal of confidence in the average Gambian. I thought everybody was um, a dependable character. I remember when I was a student in Furabi. Then the NPC government, the APC government had failed completely the nation. APC On a daily occurrence, things would happen to the disappointment of the average citizen. And I used to stand in the midst of my Sierra Leonean colleagues and I would tell them, this is not possible in the Gambia. I used to swear on the Quran that this cannot happen in the Gambia. Because I had faith in the country. But I was mistaken. What Jame did, he did it in conspiracy with Gambians. And like Vatikioti said, He's a historian who wrote the history of um, he, he, history of Egypt in a book entitled Modern Egypt. He said no society is written on a tabula rasa. No society is written on a clean slate. Um, I thank God for one development in the subregion. I believe in smaller nations like the Gambia, uh, we may not go through the experience of coups anymore. And I believe that because if it happens, the bigger nations will not, in West Africa, will not allow it. But for that, but what I have seen Gambians tolerate, any time there is a coup in this country, we can be enslaved in our own country. As far as the army is concerned, I was very hopeful that there was going to be security sector reforms. But I'm disappointed. I was hopeful that the commissions of inquiries that actually were established I was hopeful that the government was going to implement the recommendations of those commissions of inquiry. But I'm equally disappointed. And I'm afraid that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report Truth and Reconciliation report may be faced with the same degree of lethargy that at the end of the day it will only become stories in our Bantabas. Um, I think um, we are faced with the Problem of leadership. Uh, I'm not doing politics. But this is our country. I'm calling on the government uh, without any partisan feeling. People who took liberty who took the who took liberty into their hands and brutalized innocent Gambians. I'm appealing to the government. I'm appealing to the government that 
they must not allow an air of impunity over that. Because um, I believe every Gambian has the the urge to revenge. But the only reason why people are not doing so is because they have faith that the government will enforce the law. So I'm calling on all Gambians. I'm calling on uh, the government that at least if all other commission reports are going to be ignored. Because should be looked into. I had the unfortunate experience of listening to a lady when I was a magistrate. Uh, in Farafenye. Farafenye she was a, a relative of Sadauda. Ah, Sadauda bad Only because of that. Oda ma kambadora. She was arrested. Ya muta. Brought a mile too. Ya samba mile too. Was tortured naked. Ya tajirinte ya electrocuted. Ya ya soka ni mkurangola. In her private part. Alagina, Cold water alam, poured alam. over her. Anytime she sits to reflect over it, she will cry. And she was in, um, she had age on her side. Are we going to allow all these people to go to their graves without any form of justice taking place? As a government and a people, I hope. I hope. And this is my very big hope that the government will give due attention to the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Because without it, how are we going to guarantee justice? To people who have been traumatized. Some people are not even enjoying the common feeling that they are Gambians. Because they feel that they have been betrayed and disappointed by their own government. I'm referring to the AFPRC, APRC government. The people you are, you are expected to protect. If they are the ones who have now become your victims, are we going to allow that climate of impunity to prevail? Are we that climate of impunity to prevail? Are we going to allow that climate of impunity to prevail? We will all, as Gambians, take the position that that is not going to prevail in this country. Really. People have seen their parents abuse in all forms. And the only reason why they have not taken the, to the part of revenge is because there is a hope that a day of reckoning will come and people will be called to account in my personal opinion even when those who have been brutalized have forgiven I don't think there should be blanket impunity and um, I believe and uh, Latako. That's all I have to say. There have been many Gambians, like myself, who stood their ground, who are not alive here today. So for me, it's not on account of my own strength. It's only by the will and the power of the Almighty. 
I thank my parents. And then I thank TRRC. Um, I was unable to come here much earlier. Mainly because of my schedule in, in the courts. But may I take this opportunity to thank the entire staff of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, it's a service which the nation appreciates very much. Because for us lawyers, We've been privy to most of this information. But if you tell a lot of people in the streets, they can't believe it. So, but the perpetrators themselves, some of them, have now opened up. And they have explained what they did. Although many also came here, and they lied, and the nation is aware, and they have lied. So, honourable chairman, honourable chairman, I can only commend you and members of your commission. And the entire staff here, we are praying and hoping that, that the Almighty will continue to guide you for you to be able to successfully accomplish this task. I thank you all. And God bless you all. You. Baraka. Lots of wisdom in those um, concluding remarks, Mr. Toure. Thank you very much indeed. Baraka and, uh, Bake. All your efforts and the coming yeah. to testify. You call me Baker Bruka Jedro Yena, I like Shedi Andrew, the Ning Commission on Yatilumala. Yes, um, uh, the objectives uh, of the Commission. Ah, Tonya, coming Commission on Ning Yentaka Minke. As defined them in the Constituent Act. Does mention healing and reconciliation. But it also has them as a a principal objective. Addressing impunity. We as a commission will do our best to make recommendations that would um, uh, help them um, bring about reconciliation and, uh, um, Reconciliation, healing, but uh, very importantly, but if an amingana commands impunity, well, and cool mulmi are your cool jolke, ya kenya minga fem for jing, a joka kanaka, and make recommendations for. Uh, meaningful reforms. We do hope um, uh, that uh, the country as a whole would fight and struggle to implement those uh, recommendations. Again, we thank you enormously for your efforts okay. and uh, this would bring us um, to the end of our proceedings um, for today and it is the end of um, the 22nd session of the commission we won't have any public hearings um, uh, Next week, we'll work in the, um, in the committees. Uh, the work of the commission would continue in the committees. And then we will resume our public hearings on Monday, the 19th of April. We thank you very much, Emma, for your um, attention. And, uh,
we will call it a, a day and a week. Madam Nigeria, meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you so much. much.